Natal Burden is a joyful and friendly furball druid that hails from the city of Hartsville, where she grew up under the watchful eye of her cousin and ruler of the land, Tavis. She was fresh off an exhilarating but unfortunately heartbreaking adventure in Waterdeep, when Tavis summoned her and her best friend Valtrea to Icewind Dale. Together with old and soon-to-be new friends, she hopes to uncover the secrets surrounding the suspicious death and a seemingly never-ending winter plaguing the Ten Towns. Valtrea Margister is a young Azamar sorceress of noble birth. After the tragedy that befell her companions in the sewers of Waterdeep, she and Natal were summoned to Icewind Dale. So with the voice of her angelic guide Serafina reminding her that her journey with Natal was not yet over and that their paths were still intertwined, she shouldered her bag, packed with her warmest furs and the carefully wrapped chicken and waffle sandwich from Krizik, turned her back on Waterdeep and headed north. Losing your idols is hard. Losing your friends is harder. 16-year-old Anarissa Varskana lost both. Leaving the warmth of Waterdeep and her anonymity behind, she followed two of her surviving friends north to help the people of Icewind Dale. With her roguish talents, burgeoning magic, and occasional calligraphy, Ani will do everything she can to make sure they all come home safely this time. This is Button of the Frozen Cliff. Button is a large tabaxi and member of the Ragged Nomad's Elk tribe. Having been cast out by his chieftain, Button now spends his days in ten towns, taking odd jobs and gathering what information he can about a woman named Deidre. A woman he once rescued, but who is likely responsible for the death of his hunting party. Is Deidre truly the monster the tribe believes her to be? And if so, why was Button left alive? Myrnix is a directionally challenged Fred Dragonborn. What began as a lovely trip to the south to visit family quickly turned into a journey through the cold and desolate world that is Icewind Dale, which isn't quite their cup of tea. Myrnix passes the time offering their services as a barbarian to those in need around Ten Towns, often competing for jobs with their rival Button. Their newest job, given by a fur bulk named Tavis, seems to be becoming quite the adventure. Kira is a brewer from the town of Bremen, mustering most of the locales in Ten Towns. A recent series of Oneric visitations resulted in Tira being gifted with power by a figure called the Raven Queen to bring down her judgment on those who would attempt to disrupt the balance between the living and the dead. Accompanied by her two ravens, Leif and Sigrun, Tira has taken up as an adventurer, hoping to earn a bit of coin to supplement her dwindling income, which is now imperiled by the onset of the Frost Maiden's eternal night. They say a lone Furbolg is a dead Furbolg, but Toro of Exile begs to disagree. A rogue with mysterious powers who's been on his own for decades now. He's worked hard to master his criminal skills and harden his heart. But now, with dark and powerful forces at work in Icewind Dale, he's got to swallow back his pride and work with the team Tavis has put together. Strictly for the greater good, of course. Who knows? Let's play Dungeons and Dragons. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just play, and so, if they can't hear us... Last time, help. everybody, uh, the characters <laughs> went north to a cabin, uh, north of Tourmaline, the town they're in, and they found inside this uh, this cabin, apparently there was some sort of explosion or fire that happened, and they found this strange stone uh, that was uh, sort of had these uh, metal rings with runes wrapped around it. Uh, also on the way... Um, they found uh, that Valtrea had picked up the picked up the trait of drinking heavily, apparently to alleviate something th happening to her from this crystal that she found in the mines uh, in a previous session. And Anaris is having nothing, n none of that. And so we are uh, starting today's session just after a battle that the heroes had with a cold light walker which is this strange uh corpse that's been reanimated and is shooting light out of its um <laughs> out of its very being uh button after um the fight was over he seems uh disturbed by that and i'm sure he'll tell you all about that when he arrives but in the meantime we're going to be starting with uh, anarissa and valtrea and the stone so how do you guys want to do this um, okay, so I can't believe you stole that from me, and I want it back right now. 
I'm pretty sure it's cursed and we need to get rid of it immediately. So, uh, like, this this is not happening. And I, because I was talking to Tira before with it, so I am going to head over to... Um, before you leave, um, I cast hold person as a quickened st- spell and it's a bonus action. All right, make Do I your, make a uh, save, save or anything? What save? Uh, here you go. It should pop up in the chat, hopefully. There you go. Wisdom. <coughs> Wisdom save. Okay. Let's see. Nope. Well, I did not make you that. You are frozen in place. So, oh, yeah. so now, I, what you, would you like to do? My action to take the stone back. All right. It is deep in my backpack. It's going to take you a second, and the others are going to see you do it. All right. So cool. you're taking your action to do this. So uh, going through, you, uh, the rest of you, have, again, just uh, right after this battle happened, you see um, Valtrea cast a spell on Anarissa, and she is frozen, and, and Valtrea is going through her pockets. Uh, let's go uh, with Tira. What, do you, what would you do? Because I think you're... Actually, no, let's sorry. Let's go with Toro, because Toro is the closest to him, to that. Sure. Um, I imagine Toro was, like, checking all his gear after the fight, uh, and he hears the commotion. He hears Valtrea cast a spell, um, and he looks over and sees Anarissa frozen in place, um, Valtrea, like, rifling through her bag, and he's like, uh, he, he shouts, Hey, what what's going on over there? She stole something from me, and I'm just trying to get it back. Okay, he walks uh, over and is standing like here below them, uh, and he he's like, "Is this about that that weird stone?" Yeah, it's mine, and she took it. That was causing you to do some really odd things. I I think we I think we need to t- talk about this. How do you know? It wasn't a very hard guess. You spent a significant amount of time with it, and then you were acting strange. I haven't known you very long, but I could tell it was out of character. Okay, well, it's still mine, and she took it, so I just want it back. How about you release the spell you cast on her, and we can talk about this like adults? Have you been around Ani? There's no talking. She won't stop. Right. Well, I still think it's worth it to perhaps examine the stone further, figure out what it's doing to you. Sure, that's fine. After I get it back. Has it been a minute yet? Nope. Okay. Uh, so while this, uh, sorry, while this uh, discussion is going on, um, I, I see, I see Zach in there. I'll let him in a second. Uh, Tira, what are you doing at the same moment? I think. Um, I'm going to cast Minor Illusion to have a booming voice from right behind Valtrea. Um, just scream her name right behind her. Okay. So it's emanating from like right here. There's just a scream of Valtrea in like just this authoritative voice. Um, Valtrea, make a quick intelligence check. Saving throw. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, hold on. <clears throat> Can Anarissa be making saves against the whole person? Uh, it, technically, it hasn't come back around to Anarissa yet. Okay. Um, just from uh, the just the distraction of both Toro and Tira saying it, I'm going to say that uh, that does break your concentration, and and so with your hands in her pack. Is is um whole person concentration? Yes. Yeah. Okay, then yeah. So, uh, Anarissa, you are free. Uh, Valtrea's hands are in your pouch. You can react at this moment. Okay. Um, at this exact moment, I am going to cast Sleep. Okay. And... On Valtrea, I'm assuming? Yes. That's not enough. Okay. It's worth uh... a shot. But so, she's rifling to my bag. I still have motion. Can I grab the bag and run? 
Uh, so yeah, you you did, would, she even, did you even bother to take it off me, or are you just rifling with her, it? Her on hands. My back? Are, no, I took it off. Well, so here, let's do this. Uh, <laughs> go, both you guys roll a strength check against each other, and the winner snatches the bag from the other. Uh, okay. Oof. Six, six for Valtrea. Okay. <laughs> See, the dice rolls are going well today. Six for Anarissa. You <laughs> wrench your bag oh. from her grasp. Okay, and I am going to pretty much let's see. Now, Valtre, you I'm can go... you can use your reaction to do something if you'd like while she's uh, moving. I'm gonna go right behind Toro and just be like, <laughs> and be like, look, this thing has been it's been making her act nuts, and like I don't know what it's gonna do if I hold on to it too long or you hold to onto it too long. We don't know what this thing does, but it is it is affecting her, and we need to figure this out. Which is why you should just give it back. That way it won't affect you. It's already mine. Yeah, that's not happening. All right, so now Anarissa is behind Toro. And um, Anarissa still has the uh, the stone. Now, uh, Toro, I did whisper something to you in the chat. I, I don't know if you saw it. Yes, Okay. Cool. I did see it. Um, uh, Toro is like, uh, he's got like his... He's got one hand on his sword, um, but he's also got, like, one hand in front of him, like, kind of, sort of, trying to, um, what's the word? De-escalate? Okay. <laughs> uh, and he's he looks up at Valtre and he's like, um, we don't know if prolonged exposure will make the effects worse, or if it will make it harder to break whatever kind of enchantment it's placed on you. The, the best thing that we can do now uh, is c- keep it away, keep it hidden, and not let anyone else examine it too closely. Yeah, it needs to be somewhere. I would just throw it off the cliff, but I don't know what that'll do to her. Um, could I use persuasion to convince them to give it back to me? Uh, they obviously don't want to give it to you. If it was a magical persuasion or suggestion, I would allow it, but just be like, you know what? I think you want to give it to me isn't going to fly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> My persuasion is so high. (laughs) (laughs) I use reverse psychology (laughs) at level five. (laughs) All right. So it looks like for the moment anyway, Anarissa has maintained uh, maintained possession of the stone. Toro is uh, guarding her. Valtrea, are you resigning at least to the fact that it's still in the party's possession? Or how are you reacting to this? For now. Okay. Not happily. So, Tira, if there's nothing else, uh, is there anything else you want to do before we continue on? Because then I'm going to let uh, Button into the game. No, no, we can we can go on. All right. So uh, I'm going to let our last player in, guys, really quick. So we'll be back in literally less than a minute. So here we go. And we're back, everybody, and we're all here, which is very exciting. So now uh, the characters have just sort of argued over what to do with this strange stone that they found inside the skull of a, um, a mind flayer, and they're heading south uh, back to Tourmaline in Icewind Dale to meet up with Natel. Uh, Button's been uncharacteristically quiet uh, since the battle. Uh, Mirnix almost is, like he wasn't even here. <laughs> <laughs> Mirnix is holding this this uh, glowing orb, but it's slowly getting fainter as you're heading south, and they keep shaking it, trying to figure out what's wrong with it. <laughs> um, but what would you guys like to do right before you get to Icewind Dale? Oh, Are sorry, Termalane. Yeah, everyone's in Icewind Dale. This, the whole place is Icewind Dale. <laughs> we'll get there someday. Um, <laughs> Uh, I think on the journey uh, back to Tourmaline, uh, Toto kind of, I guess, rides up to uh, Anarissa uh, and is like, uh, if you need help carrying the stone, uh, I, well, I'm bigger than Valtrea. Uh, so I could help. You're like you're like what three feet, like three feet bigger than me? Is that, yeah, I think. So. Like, um, yeah, I I mean, 
My concern at this point is that, I, I mean, I would just like smash it somewhere or do, but I, I don't know what it'll do to her. I don't know, mm. but like, I don't think any of us should have it too long because I, I don't know how it, if it was her touching it or what, but um, yeah, we got to be careful with this. I, I don't know if it's best to take turns or you treat it like the one ring and just try to like <laughs> hope for the best. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, I just, I've got to, I've just, we have to figure this out. I just, I just have to figure this out because I can't, first off, Natal will kill me, but I, I just, this, I have to figure this out. The, I don't know what's happening to her. And I just, I wasn't there last time and I have to, I have to figure this out. Right. Um, I, can see uh, you care for Valtrea and Natal quite a lot. Um, would it would it make you feel better if someone else was carrying it? Or I mean, uh, we could figure out some sort of rotation, I suppose. Now, Arisa, are you on the sled with me, or are you? I think right? so. That's where I've usually yeah. been. So you're and I'm probably on the sled with uh, with. Toro, so this is an interesting conversa- conversation. Hey, is, I guys. forgot we were on dog sleds. This is an, I, for some reason I was imagining horses. For, for you also can you also can talk telepathically. So oh, if, that's true. If she was sitting right yeah. in front of you, may I suggest? Thank you so much for remembering my abilities. My abilities. <laughs> um, may I suggest we take this uh, take this conversation to our brains, please? <laughs> Meet me on the mindscape. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, even more um, sort of grumpily than normal, uh, riding Alvin, Button has moved a little bit ahead of the group towards Tourmaline. Again, he hasn't said anything since the battle. Um, keeping clear of the forest, as you saw that strange tree and owl last time, you move around the snowy bank, heading back towards Tourmaline, and... Uh, you make it back to the town without any any trouble, which is nice. Um, it, it is starting to get to be around evening time now, and uh, you uh, discussed with uh, Natel that you would meet back in the East Wind um, Inn, East Side Inn. Is there anybody in this town that we know of that like understands magical things or like we could take this crystal to? Like I- I'm going to be like actively looking for someone who has answers. You don't know of anyone in this town. You you haven't been here before. I'm just saying we hadn't heard anything. We don't see anybody when we come in that like There's not a I wizard there like What's up, guys? There's I mean, you thing. never know. I mean, I just figured <laughs> out in case someone in I'm case... a cookie town wizard. <laughs> I don't like I mean <laughs> You, know, like, you never know. Would, would yeah. any of the characters who live in Ten Towns be familiar? Like, would they have heard of, like, a Mage's Guild or a Wizard's uh, There's definitely not a Mage's Guild in Icewind Dale. Oh, okay. Not here. Okay. Mm-hmm. This is the the, okay. the deep north. <laughs> so, <laughs> right. That's, uh, that's what I figured. Okay. You make it. Uh, you have the doors open. You're you're welcome to. You're, you're happy to get inside the warmth of the of the, the inn. And you see uh, Natel sitting at a, a table large enough to accommodate your entire group. It's very convenient. Uh, it's almost yeah. like I was expecting you guys to show up. <laughs> I am immediately across the room as fast as I can, and I am just like spilling what is going on. Like, maybe not breathing in between sentences, just like stream of consciousness, just going through Anarissa? the whole thing. Anarissa, slow, slow down. I can't understand what you're saying. <laughs> okay, so there's Calm a crystal, and it was seat. in a. It was in a mind flayer's brain, and then Val played with it, and now Val is being very, very weird and drinking a lot, and like she actually cast spells on me to try to steal it back, and like because you stole from me in the first place, she says as she drinks constantly. <laughs> she's gonna like she's drinking constantly. When did Since we get here? Is... <laughs> hey, uh, uh, you, you know when you like sometimes just sort of phase out like what you're doing, like you get really in the zone. We. I just completely forgot the Shrek home. What are their problems? <laughs> they seem very upset at, with each other. I look at Peter, oh I'm God. like, what the, I just, what the fuck happened? <laughs> you guys were gone it for was, like three days. Well, well okay, so, so for us, I had a lot on my mind, I'm um, sure. But Button shifted through a lot of really fresh shit, and I think it's probably messed up his head a little bit. 
<laughs> um, yes, not very. Are we talking uh, metaphorical or literal shit? Both. Both. Yes. <laughs> yes. I did see some shit. Um, okay. Uh, we we found the cabin of like a dead um, a dead mage who has entrusted us to try to finish his work, uh, restoring um, like summer and warmth back to Icewind Dale. And okay. y- yes, so Valtreya got out of a, a crystal. It's it's done something really weird to <laughs> her. I haven't known her long, but I can tell you this is definitely not not normal. Yeah. And Valtreya, and a, were you were you drunk during a mission? Yes. Only yes, she was. Slightly. Considerably. We had to help her stand at one point. What? Wait, sorry, Toro didn't hear you. What'd you say? Oh, uh, like, un- like under his breath, Toro was just like, you were having trouble walking at one point. Are you serious? Faltreya! The, the, the floor was weak. I mean, no! I it. I'm very I disappointed in you. Faltreya, no. She held her own. I mean, I'm not sure what the problem is. There Thank were you, four other people here. No, hold on. There were four other people there that were depending on you and you were drinking. I don't think she has any control over this. Like she, she has been strange ever since she's tried to investigate this crystal, and it, she, she cast hold person on me to get it back after because I snuck it from her to try to see if it would break the connection or something. And I mean, it's been in my pack. Like we, none of us have touched it. We're trying okay. to keep it and away from each other. She's but like, still, and you're still trying to get it back. She's still trying to get it back. I mean, I would have just thrown it off the cliff, but like, I don't I was, know if it's gonna hurt her. I was talking to Valtrea. Yeah, I know she's uh, Anaris is just like just she's yeah. she's fidgeting. She's not like she is. Let, let me very upset. let me let me talk to to Val about it. So you still want it back after you were obviously not acting like yourself. Well, I mean, I guess it's just the whole you know principle of it. She stole it from me. That's rude. Yes. Maybe, maybe a little rude, but I, it sounds like you wouldn't have given it up otherwise. Have you prayed to Serafina about this? About maybe the fact that you were acting so out of character? No, I didn't really even think about that. I think you should. I think that would maybe help you. Eh, maybe. See, this is why I miss you. And she, like, <laughs> I just I I, t- I hold her and I just take her wine skin away and I toss it to, to whoever's closest to me. It's me, the random town wizard. Thanks for the wine skin. Yeah. <laughs> the questions we have questions. Oh. <laughs> I don't know if I hadn't asked though, somewhere towards the end, Chris would have been like, so you know, there happens to be like a sorcerer who just hangs out in this town. I'd be like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, sorcerer McGee! <laughs> <laughs> it's me, Doctor Ricardo, or whatever that guy's name was. <laughs> All righty. So, um, I think last you were uh, come. Oh, uh, you have information to tell from Tavis. Oh, I do. So while you guys were gone, and apparently everything went to shit, um, I met up with Tavis via Paper and... Bird, not in real life. <laughs> oh yeah. No, he, there was a paper bird that he sent to me with information in it. Um, so I told the bird to tell Tavis that um, we know that Steph at Caracho is undead, but that he escaped. And now Tavis would like us to regroup with him and Kira Kolnig in a few days' time. And while you were gone, I kept up with Trex, the kobold, but he's acting very strange. Like, he can barely function... As like a, I don't want to say human like kobold, but he's lost a lot of his refinement, I guess. He's not. He's, uh, he's devolving. He, like reverting back into standard kobold shenanigans. Yes. Yes, he is. <laughs> That's quite interesting. Um, is it affecting the deal that they made with the townspeople or anything? Is, is it? Uh, not that you can see. Um, he, um, he not does yet. Seem, he does seem but, to be bored. Yeah. At first, he was very excited to be in this town, um, and you know, interested in the like <laughs> the the politics of the small town and everything like that. Uh, just how people were getting through day to day, and then recently, 
uh, he's just been kind of like moping around. You know, that makes a lot of sense. In my experience, goblins have, uh, kobolds have very short attention spans. <laughs> True. Yeah. I've, I've, nev- uh, I've never dealt but... extensively with kobolds. I I, have, I haven't either, but they just, I, I see them and they just get focused on one thing and then they just sort of. No, that's you know, not always they, the they case. Kind of lose their... Yeah, that's not always. One of our good friends is a kobold. He very much had a short attention span, but I mean, he stayed with us for months. Yeah, um, and we... even still, uh... there'd be, if he needed to focus on something, he would. Like that, he had the ability to like, when he needed to, but... Um, Especially I, doubt, I doubt that very him. highly. There's no way that happened. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? One day, I will convince him to come up here and talk to you, so that way you'll know. Forward. I look forward to that day, where I can speak to this kobold <laughs> friend of yours. I'm very interested <laughs> to have a long conversation oh, right here. I'll get to my friend Krendik to come up to the goblin, and you can meet my goblin and my kobold friends. I'd love that. We can That's just okay. chit-chat with all of them. What, what interesting friends you keep. We're getting off track. Yeah, I, I Just look at then, him and I'm like, yes, the door is interesting. Open. <laughs> the door is open to the inn and in walks Speaker Mashew, the half-orc who's in charge of Tourmaline. Uh, seeing you, he smiles and nods, raises a glass, um, and or no, he hasn't gotten the glass yet. He goes to the bar to order a drink and he waves to you and he says, oh, my friends, thanks. Great work with the kobolds. They are turning out to be quite uh, helpful in our mining endeavors. Um, good. Good? How? You said that very strangely. What do you mean? You had like an inflection to it that isn't, uh, you're like, mm, helpful, right? Like, we're... It's, it's not a sex thing, if that's what you're implying. <laughs> well, it wasn't, but that's, <laughs> like button, like, that's gross button. Ew. <laughs> oh, I, that wasn't what I was, but I mean, that's good. I'm glad. <laughs> I mean, I've heard about that once. It's pretty interesting. So, um, I, you've never heard about the mining cobalt? That's a, it's a weird move. <laughs> it requires a lot of practice. Prone and restrained. So, uh, the, uh, the, um, the speaker reaches across and takes a, 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 go- a small goblet of wine and raises it up to you and takes a small sip. It's like, you, will you be staying in Termalane long? Uh... I don't For know. the night, at least. Yeah. Well, very good. Oh, uh, hope you the best on your journeys. Mm. You as well. Thank you. Um, you know, do we know when Trex started to like? Because I know it sounded like from the other kobolds that he, his focus on more human aspects of behavior wasn't always a thing. Do we know when exactly that started? Did it start maybe when he went down into the mine? So, uh, no. The uh, Oh, you don't know when it started. Natal, you probably would guess that it ended decently abruptly. Like one day he was this uh, smart-speaking kobold, and then the next time you saw him, he was like, Hi, I'm a kobold! Yeah. No, but well, I, I mean, I mean the other finger. side of it. I mean the other side of it, because the other kobolds were saying things like, Oh, well, he doesn't speak draconic anymore, and he doesn't do know. this. You haven't asked them. No, I know. I just was asking in case she learned it. I between. have no idea. I just okay. noticed that he was starting to act different. All right, so the speaker I'm takes a seat sure. at the bar yeah. and is discussing um, something with the barkeep and uh, has turned his attention away from you. Um, so, uh, listen, I've had a lot on my mind. The, uh, the thing we killed back there, I did most of the work on, but I appreciate the assist on uh, killing it, the, the glowing-faced creature. It reminds me of some of the other nomadic tribes. Uh, they, uh, they've they become a bit obsessed with this uh, odd metal, and it sort of drives them to become more feral creatures of odd magics, and it's just very similar to th- that thing. So you're, you're saying that other nomads are changing into the sort of creature that we saw, or they're obsessed with the sort of creature we saw? They're changing into that sort of creature, and perhaps if they're going after whatever this ball is that Myrnix is holding, uh, maybe it's that particular metal, or 
I don't know. But uh, it's sort of harming the, mm. the, the few remaining nomads left. And those tribes are dicks, though, so. But then it seems to me that maybe our best bet is getting to Bryn Chander and talking to Copper and seeing if they know anything about what this is and maybe how to either activate or deactivate whatever this is. It's a good plan. I agree with it. Very good. Uh, is there anything else you char- your characters like to do before turning in for the night? No, I'm gonna. Uh, I'd like to grab a another bit of owlbear food. Okay, sure. You can go ahead and just take off the nine gold pieces. All right. Um, I'm going to. I'm just gonna scoop up Freltrea and go and get at least two flagons of water from the barkeep and take her up to our room that I've gotten. Um, okay sober her up and make her pray to Serafina <laughs> for a long time <laughs> before she goes to bed. Yeah, I mean, I think you know, either Ani gets uh, Natel quickly before she does this or like maybe messages her or something. It's just like, do you think this is going to fix it? Is there anything else we should be doing? I think this is the first step and the only thing we can do right now. So. Okay. This is what I'm going to try first. Quick point right. of order, just so we don't get confused. The uh, stone, the summer stone that you found, the strange thing with the rings around it. Um, mm-hmm. The stone inside is like a burnt out sort of, it looks like it was um, almost like a, a piece of coal, like absorbed it with, with heat. It's not the same um, dark crystal that um, the ragged nomads were looking for. It's not the same thing. Uh, and it's also not the same thing as just, the... Just uh, Button's best guess. Yeah, sure. Just, uh, just so we don't go down there. And then the crystal that uh, Valtrea ha- or Anarissa has now is, again, a different... There's a lot of crystals in this campaign. They're different. Yeah. Are we all staying in the same room, or are we in separate at different points? Because uh, you're gonna, The di- most you can do is two per room. Okay, because I'm going to make sure that I'm not in the same room as Valtrea, and I am going to, like, put the bag, like as far away from us sleeping as as you I can. can. I'm you can go stay with me. Um, uh, Leif, um, uh, Sigrin actually can stay up all night. She can watch for us if you need to get some sleep. You don't have to constantly watch your bag. I think you should... Uh... No, no, she is um, she's a spirit raven, so she just stays awake. She can okay. wake us if we if we need to fall asleep or something, but she does not require should... sleep. You should give that to somebody you're not so emotionally attached to. I mean, I don't mind someone else taking it. I that's that's not the issue. I'm I'm not attached to it at this point. I'm just I just don't want I just don't want Val to get it back again. Uh, There's something worse to her. Telepathically, uh, Toro says to Anarista, um, "Wait for Natel to take Valtrea upstairs, and then you can." pass it to me. Uh, that way Valtrea will think that you still have it. Can I respond to you back telepathically? Yes. Like with the, is, okay. Yeah, so that's part that of the ability that I have. Person. Okay, yeah. No, I, I know that <laughs> Ani hasn't asked specific questions us because you seem to be able to just do this whereas like I have to do the message deal, so. Yeah, it's not a spell that I'm casting, it's just that's, something that I do. Yeah, that's what I figured. I just want to make sure it worked the same. But mm-hmm. yeah, I'm like, sure, that's, that's fine. Because I also realized that like if it comes down to a strength check, you're more likely to win. <laughs> so. Listen, you say that, my strength is 10. <laughs> you need strong. Have, yeah, I was going to say. I, I just, well, I'm just bigger. <laughs> but if I'm with, but if I'm with Tira and then you two are together, then like, oh, that's true. then it's fine. But, yeah. but yeah, but I definitely go up to the, the little raven who's going to be watching the bag and I'm just kind of like petting her and trying to say thank you. I don't know if she's going to understand me at all <laughs> but I'm just trying to be appreciative but um, but yeah I think the fact that we're all working together like Ani like she's not relaxed but she's a bit calmer about it. If, if it had been that no one was taking this seriously or we were blowing it off she she just I don't know like this is not like but she's she's still very nervous like mm. i don't know that she's gonna sleep all that well like this it's one of those things where this definitely is something that she's very like she's very protective of them mm-hmm. and i don't know how much the other characters know but like in the sense that 
Yeah, that's what I mean. Like, yeah. you know, it's like her her whole deal is that she's <clears throat> kind of sitting here and it's just like, as she's talking to you, she's like, I just have to make sure we take care of this. I, I wasn't there last time and she almost died. The others, the others died and I wasn't there to help. And I, I just have to make sure that I help this time. Why are you two staring at each other so much? It's very <laughs> nervous. <laughs> Wait, was, was that last bit out loud? Blankly looking at each other. I'm not, like, well, I guess if I guess it is still quiet. If you guys are having telepathic conversations with yeah, each other, I'm wondering why you're staring at each other. <laughs> no. I, Toto doesn't need to be staring at anyone to use his telepathy. Yeah, uh, neither so do, he would do absolutely I. just he he would just he would be sitting there casually like not no, very much. I kind of like the idea of just it. eyebrows moving up and down like that kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> but, so the funny thing is, is like in order for you to cast message, like there is like a copper wire you need, yeah. and Ellie like had like my other character has um a bracelet that has mm. copper wire in it and that's why she doesn't always have to like wave it in her hand but like Anna Arissa doesn't have that so I feel like she is yeah. si sitting here fiddling with this wire and occasionally pointing to Toro because that's what <laughs> <it> requires <laughs> All right. so uh, after the um, uh, did you I'm sorry did you end up giving it to Toro yeah once Natel takes Valtrea upstairs like she's gonna think that I have it because she's not gonna see it trade hands right. and Without touching this thing directly, like I've got it wrapped mm. in a handkerchief, like we're gonna stick it somewhere in their room so that if she tries to come in my room to get it, mm -hmm. she's got one more obstacle. That works. All right, so uh, with that, uh, if there's nothing else, I'm gonna say you turn in for the night. When I get to my room, I notice that uh, coming in through one of the windows is like a it's like a nice block of moonlight, and I'm just gonna like instinctively start laying down <laughs> right there. <laughs> Moving every so often as it moves across the floor. Yeah, it's just like of... get up and move back. Yeah, over. yeah. <laughs> a couple it's steps. Right. So, um, <laughs> stretch out. Just before we go to sleep, after Valtrea has done her praying, um, I'm not going to sleep on the bed. I'm going to sleep propped up against the door. Okay. Okay. With Valtrea in the same room as you. Yep. Got it. Um, all right. So, uh, Valtrea, uh, is there anything your character would like to do during the night? Um, it seems that the um, condition has lessened. Mm -hmm. um, I imagine she's probably drunk sleeping it off. Um, would have definitely, you know, talked to Serafina ask her if she like could explain what was going on <clears throat> so um what do you ask seraphina specifically um, oh, whatever, girl <laughs> I, could I haven't seen you in forever no. <laughs> um, <laughs> um i've been having this problem um I, I haven't been able to hear very well i've had this ringing in my ears um it came on when i had this crystal um i really would like to have it back um but i don't know if the problem was related to that um or if it's going to continue to affect me or come back so um you more sort of f feel an answer than get an actual verbal response but it ends up mm -hmm. um she says um, that that is no stone that you carry it's something n not of this world and i fear if you hold it it may take me away from you so do not let it fall into evil's hands but know that if you carry it i'm, I'm i may not be able to reach you I almost lost you just now. Oh. Uh, Dear oh. Serafina, It's Me, Valtrea, is the new book that I need to acquire. <laughs> <laughs> um, is there... Are you there, Serafina? It's me, Valtrea. Yeah. <laughs> is there a way to destroy it? Should it be destroyed? Uh, you you get no more answers from Serafina this night. 
Okay. Um, Tiamat would have said yes. <laughs> <laughs> bring it to me. Give it to my priest, Marv, and he'll bring it down to the under. <laughs> oh, I had a quick DM question. Yep. Um, as a demigod, am I able to pray to Jareth? You can. You can't guarantee that they'll okay. respond, but you can. Okay. Yeah, I'm just going to... Um, I would like to do that. Uh, and just, you know, just kind of a very short synopsis of like, hey, my friend Altrey is in trouble. It's because of this crystal, and I'll give a description. Like, I'm just looking for guidance on what I can do. And she went to Jareth. <laughs> <laughs> That's so good. Thank you. That was Thank you. <laughs> All right, that is that is a pun. That, that is a punspiration, by the way. That is one. <laughs> <laughs> um, which I'll put on in a minute. So, uh, you hear no response uh, from. Um, from yeah. the water deep deity, you don't know whether that's because you're out of range or they know nothing about it. But unfortunately, you don't get reception up here. Yeah. There's a spot. <laughs> like, hey, uh, yeah, totally worth the drive. <laughs> um, anything else? If not, we'll break to the next day. Oh, sorry, Toro. What are you doing? Uh, Toro is going to get to the room with Button. Wait until he's asleep mm -hmm. uh and then unwrap the crystal and get a closer look at it sounds great all right um i'd like you to do two things i'd like you to roll an investigation check mm -hmm. so we'll start with that okay Kay. oh no eight it's 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 oh. very pretty so as you stare into it it looks clear from just uh, looking at it but when you look more closely you see uh small um like almost like shining lights or reflections shooting through it in different patterns and that sort of is hypnotizing in a way almost like you need to make a wisdom saving throw okay <laughs> is it creating like oh, a no. light dot on the floor at all inspiration <laughs> we already we it. have an inspiration oh, you have one right. you Use have it. one all right oh god uh, okay. hello I, this is the worst <laughs> <laughs> all right uh, I'm gonna whisper something to you in the chat Okay. Anarissa is going to have words because I feel like she would not have unwrapped the damn thing. Well, no, Toro did. No, I know. <laughs> no. I gave it to Toro thinking he had some sense. Yeah. He's a rogue. It's amazing. Sounds like a you problem. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You gave, you gave there you go. You gave shiny crystal. Okay. Makes sense. I have seen it. Yes. All right. Great. So the next uh, morning, um, the uh, the sun or the sun does not come out because we're in freaking Icewind Dale. Sorry. So <laughs> I almost yeah ruined the thing. The so sky gets a little. It's like <laughs> we did it. We saved <laughs> the sun. The sun starts to rise. Like oh no. <laughs> Sorry, wrong <laughs> campaign, and it just sets again. <laughs> we'll see you at the end. Hopefully. Way too cold. <laughs> All right. So. Um, the next uh, day, you guys uh, get whatever supplies you need. Everyone, um, not from today, but for anyone who went to the Black Cabin, make sure you remove one uh, rations for sure. Um, and then uh, you mount up and head south, heading back towards Bryn oh. Shander. Unless there's something okay. else we wanted to do. Oh, no, I just kind of wanted to follow up, like, with Veltre after the night. Oh, after sure, she's absolutely. Had the chance to sober up yet. Go right ahead. Um. So I just I walk over to him like, good morning, Starshine. Did you have a good conversation with Serafina? Did you not yell at me, please? Thank you. Uh -oh. <laughs> I'm not yelling. <laughs> I'm speaking very softly. <laughs> You've just been drunk for four days. Um, yeah, I, uh, <laughs> I talked with her. She said it was um, ancient and evil and that she almost lost contact with me um that i just need to stay far away from it and um, so, so, so cor cor correction sorry just so I, um, she she said it should not fall into the hands of evil and it's from another world not right. that it thank was you. evil. Yeah. okay Rewind. continue <laughs> <laughs> thank you yeah 
Um, yeah, and, uh, mysterious narrator. <laughs> Seraphine, it's like no, 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 no. don't get it twisted. <laughs> and what I say, hey, Valtre, it's me, Seraphina, and what I say. <laughs> um, yeah, so definitely don't need to touch it anymore, and we should probably keep it wrapped up, wrapped up, and tucked away. Don't tell Ani I said she was right. I won't mention it. Thank you. But maybe you should say something to her because she was very frantic yesterday. <sighs> Fine. I know. <laughs> okay, so we go downstairs and we relay this to the rest of the group and like it's obviously very dangerous. Like we probably shouldn't even look at it and we need to figure out how to get rid of it. Okay, uh, but but Valtrea seems to be behaving more normally at this point, at least from, like, my perspective watching. She seems hungover, but she... Very hungover. Yes. Uh, she did not instinctively go for the ale first thing in the morning. Okay. So that... So I'm a little bit more relaxed. Although I am trying to, like... I'm sort of going between her and Toro, because I know Toro has it, and I don't, like... So it's, <laughs> like, I, I'm watching sort of both of them, but I am definitely focusing more on Valtrea. Okay. Mm. I can keep my skull, though, right? And I pull out the skull. <laughs> There's no, there shouldn't be any issues with this, with this oh, thing. Oh hell yeah, that thing's cool. No, yeah, cool. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, hey. right? That's not cursed or anything, is it? I wasn't there when you got it. I don't know. Not as far as we know. Hasn't been so far. Okay. He he hasn't been drinking obsessively, so I mean, I guess that's a good sign. Not obsessively. <laughs> hey Chris, can I do a perception check? Yes. So funny thing, uh, me and Tora have been messaging back and forth, and they asked me a question, and my first thing was, "Yep," followed me, but followed immediately, like me being, "I mean, nope." And I'm sure, I'm sure that was exceptionally confusing. Uh, you can't find the source. Okay. Uh, I'm assuming we're at. Are we eating breakfast here? Mm-hmm. And by the way, for the, the night, everyone's, and the food for tonight, or th this morning and last night, everything's five silver pieces total. Okay. Stop doing silver. I only have gold. <laughs> I can go copper. Uh, no, I I can't math. I'm a, I'm a dumb cat. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Toro went ahead and took took uh, care of it. All right. For everybody. Oh. All right. Oh. And I'll just keep feigning ignorance then and <laughs> <laughs> all right so um valtrea just so we're clear you um aren't feeling or or experiencing any of the stuff that you were okay okay, okay. all right so you head south um and uh what is the riding situation mirnix is going to be taking uh the the um chocobo But, uh, button, your al but, button your Alvin ding. May as well. That works. Wild shape from Natel. Anyone riding Natel? Yep. Me. Okay. I can take Ani too. Yeah, uh, I mean, I'm going to. As long as they're you cool. You guys can have a little chat on the way down there. That's true. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I will check in with Toro before we go and, and you know, be like, you know, thank you for, for taking that last night. Do you want to take turns? Do you want to. to to trade so you don't have to worry about it the entire time? Uh, no, it's <laughs> alright. Uh, it hasn't been bothering me at all. Um, I can hold on to it. Um, okay. If, if it starts making you feel bad or like it hurt, like it seemed like it was ringing or hurting something with Valtrea, like just let right. one of us know. We'll take a turn. Uh, yes, I will do that. So. All right. So uh, as you're mounting up, heading out to leave, uh, you see the road to um, Targos, which would eventually lead to Bryn Shander to the south of you. Um, but then you see uh, a figure walking back north towards where the mines were, uh, a small little creature with uh, wooden paper wings. Oh, hello. I found these wings. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, I would lose my shit. <laughs> that's so good. I was so confused for a second. I was like, Zach, that's not the right voice. It's not. It's not. 
Uh, I think Chris is being a little shit again, like you and Chris are being. Uh... <laughs> no, no, no. All right, so. Uh, all right, uh, can I uh, perception check to figure out what it is? It's Trex, is it like the coming kobold. towards us? It's Trex, the kobold, oh. walking away from you. Oh, gotcha. Uh, Toto, I guess, looks at, like, Natal and Valtran and Arissa and, like, gestures to Trex where he's walking. Do, do we want to take care of this, or are we going to continue on with the mission? I mean, we probably should at least check in on him. It's up to you. Open world. <laughs> mm. We just keep stepping on these plug points as we can every time we walk. So many. <laughs> Stop it! I'm confused. <laughs> um, I don't particularly care for him. Uh, <laughs> I don't give a not... shit about that. <laughs> oh, what a surprise! Um, oh, I'm wild shaped. Um, yeah. I can't answer for myself. You just so like start. <laughs> Axe me. <laughs> oh, you're start... an axe. That's right. What? Are you an no, axe? No, you're big chunk. No. Oh, you're a big chunk. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, I start walking over there, hoping everybody else will follow, since I have like a third of the party on my back. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I certainly get the message. I'm like, okay, yeah, like decision made. We're we're so, heading over. He uh, sorry, uh, heading towards tracks or heading towards the tracks. Tracks. All right. Uh, yeah. You you march over to him, and he turns around, and he sees this large creature uh, <laughs> looking down at him, being oh. ridden by. And he's like. Ah! And he starts running. No, no, no Trex, it's us, it's us, it's us. His We're going on. Check for Trex. <laughs> His wings are actually pulling him back, preventing him from running full speed as he's flopping, heading north. He's running can away. I, can I jump down off of Natel and dash and get in front of him and be like, hey, yeah. hey, it's us. That's Natel. She just she just turns into animals sometimes. Okay. He's like, I, 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 I don't eat me. We're not going to eat you. It's it's, it's Natal. She's just a giant. She just turns into giant. I don't animals care what the so monster's often. name is. I just don't want you to eat me. No, you've met her before. She won't eat you. I think I would remember if I met that. Okay, it's a good puppy. A good puppy. Just a very. I'll lay down. <laughs> okay. Tail starts wagging. I think you know. Uh, she won't hurt you. I've so. heard that before. Well. I have lots of stabby things, and I can protect you. What do you want? Well, I just want to check and see how you were doing. Why how, would how you care it? how I was doing? I because... never met you before. Ooh. We met uh -oh. down in the mines. That's where we I'm going about... now. Apparently my friends are there. I woke up, and I was in a human town. I don't really fit in there. Huh. What was the last thing you remember before that? Ah, uh, there was a big furry thing with claws. There was in a cave. Big furry like me, big furry like her, big furry. Oh, bigger than yeah. you. Like uh, a, a lot more. It's uh, what are they? What are there? Were some humans there? Are they a uh, yeti? Yeti. Yeti. Yeah. Like a yeti. Yeah, I ran from that. Much scarier than the. Do I'm scared of the. I'm scared of most things. I have a low CR. <laughs> yeah, that's one thing I uh, I know about them. <laughs> They're basically useless in a fight. <laughs> if there's a lot of us, we use our tactics. But it <laughs> <laughs> uh, he's like, if you're done, uh, I kind of want to go see my friends now. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, um, nice meeting you. Nice meeting you. I I'm I'm Anarissa. Hope to see you around again. Yeah, my, I've met my some name's of your friends. Trex. Sorry. Yes. Uh, well. Okay. Okay. Bye. No. And I'm just kind of looking at the others, like, like. He seems fine. What? He just has no idea who you are. That's not fine. People don't just lose their memories. For... Well, they do, but. <laughs> <laughs> not like sure. that. So, I mean, like. That's about the memory I would expect from a kobold. No, mm -hmm. that's not. No, they're they're idiots, all of them, just completely. <laughs> I can't, I can't you can't even do that with a straight I face. I can't talk shit. He's like my favorite character I've ever made. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, is this something way, you want yes. to continue to investigate? Uh, I, I, there's a lot on our plate currently. I, I don't know that I have it in me to 
find out why a kobold can't remember why he's so kobold. Is this I, something, and I'm kind of looking at it as like, we, can we come back and check on him? Or I think we should definitely come back and check, but right now, I think what we need to focus on is the possibility of ending this endless winter. Yeah. That's what this... All right. He's got of. he's got his friends, and he seems okay in the sense that like he's at least he's not doing anything actively destructive. Like he's not, you know, he doesn't hurting remember himself anything anything. that has happened After. recently. Right, right. Yeah. It's just the yeti mm-hmm. and running from that, the yeti that could affect if they if these if these kobolds listen to him and respect him. It could lead to them falling back on their word making it uh, difficult for the miners. If that if that happens, then Speaker Mashu will deal with the situation. Uh, I, I think if we can even catch up with him later, we, we have more important things to do. We, uh, we need I to be getting on with it. Toro, right. really I... quick insight check. Okay. 16. Uh, nothing. Never mind. All right. Thanks for playing. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, Um, I mean, I I think... I think Ani is a bit conflicted about it, but that crystal is still kind of on her mind. And obviously we've got other things to, to go forward, but, you know, it's like going to figure this out with Copper. Maybe he knows something about this, too. You know, like maybe mm-hmm. we can do two birds here. So, right. but all right. So uh, we're heading south. Is that the plan? Yeah. Yep. Because the the two birds come, and I think Tia would look over with alarm. <laughs> 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 that sorry, is, yeah. sorry. It's just a, it's a it's an expression. It's like sorry. All right. Mm. Uh, let me just adjust <laughs> our. Uh, I think we're zero zero on inspiration for both uh, yeah. both teams. Yes. Um, I, this is just from last time. Don't forget, guys, if you have earned any craft points, you can spend them to give either the player's inspiration or the DM. So, depends on, uh, you know, how it goes. Uh, is Bryn Shander... Uh, uh, oh, uh, no. The okay. answer is no. Sorry. I was reading out loud because I'm, I'm looking at the chat. I'm like, hey, let me tell no, you. No, you're good. <laughs> All right, cool. No, you've been there before. You guys start. Oh, okay. that, you guys met there. That's where you met with Tavis, and we all started oh, there. that's right. Yeah. So I we're going to be heading to he Targos to the south, and then we're going to be heading further south to Bryn Shander. That's the plan, okay? Mm-hmm. So You can just cut all the way through. You could start Fuck through, the but you know, it, you, line. you know from experience, it's a, it's a, there, there's a more it's danger. Basic, it's super deadly. I wouldn't. It's not the I best. Actually do follow it. the dotted red <laughs> road. That's what it's for. It's real convenient that they yes. laid these dots. So, so yeah, they're they're very evenly <laughs> spaced. Um, so as you're uh, passing uh, Mayor Dolden, uh, the lake uh, button, as you're riding, you see uh, closer to the lake surface, you see um, beams of light shooting straight up into the sky. Now those are the lake beams. I I have no idea what those are. Um, you can survive to the bottom of the lake they'll give you a sword have i ever seen anything like this is it <laughs> you, the same they light it is the same hue and uh it, it it's the same as the uh the creature you fought recently except for now there are more beams not just one they seem to and be they're... heading from the, the lakes <clears throat> area here and heading towards the path it looks like <clears throat> um if you want it, they, they don't seem to be moving directly towards you. Like, they don't necessarily see you. They're too far off. Um, either you might run into them on the road further up, or you could try and lay in wait for them. You're not entirely sure, but just letting you know that's what you see. Okay. Um, is there any chance that I could uh, try to uh, recruit the more sneaky members uh, and... Uh, or even have the birds go and look, investigate as to what that may be. You may, if if Tira's cool with it. Yeah, absolutely. Tira, would you mind? Your no, and with that, she'll she'll put Leif on her hand and throw him into the sky, and he'll you know quickly just like wing off towards the uh, direction of the uh, the lights. All right, as uh, looking through the raven's eyes as it flies. Um, 
further towards um, the lake. Before I continue, who has the sunstone? Mirnix. Mirnix. Okay. We probably would have taken it from Mirnix. No, we'll say Mirnix still has it for now. Um, uh, yeah, Mirnix is not riding to... with us. Mirnix is yeah, riding Mirnix... with us, uh, at yeah, least for now, so. but kind of as a uh, behind-the-scenes character. Oh, gotcha. Uh, because, okay. yeah. Any who's it's uh, as you you go through uh, through the Raven's eyes you see these shambling figures that seem to be heading uh, directly for the main road uh, and they look like this as some of you have seen before. How many of them are there? There are three. Um, okay, heading to the really cool looking. And they're moving their heads from <laughs> side cool to looking. side, almost like spotlights, as if they're searching for something. Okay. All right. We'll okay. have um, Leif come back, then land on my shoulder, and we'll you know relay this to the um, to the party. Okay. Cloaked beings, light shooting out of their face, like the one we killed the other day. Uh yes, three of them actually. Three. Not just the one. Mm. Uh, they appear to be searching for something. Like their heads are sort of scanning from side to side. It can be quite nasty. I bet they're looking for. That thing, the the, the daylight. You mean Almost this day. thing? Says Mir and Hicks, waving it. <laughs> no, just yes, yes, that the <laughs> opening credits to Game of Thrones. That's what we're looking <laughs> yeah. the, Oh, the Summer Star. That's what it's called. So, yeah. so, Chris, the Cold Light Walkers are they wearing anything that's distinguishing? Like you know, uh, Button had told us that the different tribes members were kind of turning into them. So. Do so, they have like yeah, uh, these ones what look like um, a, a couple of them were wearing what looked to be. Um, hold on, let me uh, make sure I'm not lying to you. Okay, yeah, a, a couple of them seem to be wearing uh, wolf pelts um, over their uh, glowing forms. Those dicks. So that's the tribe, I would assume. Wolf. The wolf. Wolf tribe, is yes. one of them. Yes. Ah, okay. Not very kind, even in life. <laughs> Not like me. Oh, when they turn of generosity. Into, when they turn into creatures like this, is there a way to turn them back, or are they just stuck like this? I've never tried to turn any of them back. I just the only one I've met, I made dead. Well, actually, you did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but like, okay, so, so there's. Point. Yeah, like, uh, like. On, on, and Arissa doesn't even care at this point. Um, but, okay. So Listen, they are not good creatures. I, I suggest we take care of them before they hurt somebody. Or they come after us and sneak up, up behind us. No, I, I agree. I just wasn't sure if there was an alternate. But, you know, if, if they're going to head towards the road and go after people, then we don't have much of an option. So I'm going to let you guys, uh, because you have the drop on them, so to speak, you're going to be able to set up an attack of some sorts. Um, for story's sake, and I'm sorry this is a little DM nonsense of me to do, I'm going to say that Mirnix rides uh, their um, owl beak, or no, what the uh, axe beak to Targos to, just, just to make sure the, the people are safe or to alert them to danger and get that character out of the way. Okay. So, yeah. well, and, well, and they have the summer stone, so they will just... If that's what yeah. they're looking for, just get it out of the way. I'll be over here. I'll head south, shaking the, <laughs> the, the glowing. <laughs> it's not glowing. Really. But yeah, so just that's what we're doing. They're in Targos. Imagine now. the scene from Jurassic Park where like he's running with a flare in his hand and the T-Rex is just chasing after him. <laughs> <laughs> so, they, so, they, so they say, I'm heading south, and they turn around and they're yeah. 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 the yeah. way we just yeah. came. <laughs> Yeah. That, I feel like that's when Natel, like, still in the in dog form, like, kind of herds her, herds yeah. Mirnix back around, like, bites, like bites she, their does, ankles. she does yeah. that herding thing, yeah. <laughs> Except I would bite their entire leg off on <laughs> <laughs> No, All the right. trick is herding dogs make it seem like they're gonna bite ankles, and then yeah. they don't, so. It's like, if anything, it's like a little nip. Also. Yeah. So, like the uh, bark you, you guys can terrible. decide how you're going to go about this. Now, the problem is, this is sort of a flat plain. There is some uh, elevation in, with the hills, but it's mo mo mostly flat leading towards the ice and the, the frozen waters. So um, it's up to you how you want to mount this attack. It'll be hard to get surprised, but it's possible. It's, um, 
Um, they're not traveling. They're not. They're not creatures that travel quietly, right? Like we'd be able to hear them coming. I mean, they're not like stomp, stomp, and they're just. They just sound like people walking over the uh, the wind and the the cold. They're they're not making a racket, if that's what you're asking. No, no, no. I'm just asking because, you know, to the party, I can cast darkness. Well, everything is dark. Yeah, yeah um, but then they wouldn't be able to see us. Their faces are made and then of light. We, it's it's it, it's magical darkness. You can do that they if you like. To... I have invisibility. I can hit two of you with it if you want. If two of you were going to go up and maybe attack them first and like start off uh, as soon as you attack like one or two of them, the rest of us can stay up and start blasting them. But I can hit at least two of you with it. Well, if we don't really care about keeping them alive from questioning them, I can smack them with a giant fireball. Uh, oh, it's good too, actually. I, I can uh, go invisible uh, by myself, um, so you can use it on someone else. Um, I've never been invisible. Would be interesting. I mean, if you want to. I mean, invisibility would automatically give a sneak attack, wouldn't it? It would, yes. Yeah. So. Oh, that's but... dirty, Seb. <laughs> I just realized how dirty a furball rogue could be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Holy mm -hmm. shit. Yeah. That's dirty. I, I heard mm -hmm. Natal, like, wait, back in Waterdeep, say that she could turn invisible as a racial trait once a day. And I was like, yep. oh, that would be so good as a furball yep. rogue. <laughs> yes, it would. <laughs> that's awesome. Anyway. <laughs> so anyway. is that the uh, the the plan? Yes, I, I guess. Wait till they get close enough, and then a bunch of us turn invisible and flank them. Okay. So let me uh, set the scene here. I'll then I'll move the map. One, two, three, four. Who am I missing? Oh, Maybe the, uh, uh, big chunk. Yes. The quicker of us uh, could, the quicker and quieter of us could go in, do a bunch of damage, and. If, uh, if all else fails, you drop a fireball. I mean, I don't want to drop a fireball on all of you. All right, no, so fine. let me set the battlefield up for you guys. If you would please <laughs> I, I, um, set I'd up you your guys actually... around Alvin. Okay. Is that Al oh, Alvin? Yes, and I will give you control of him. Is, Chris, what is this? Is this like a chasm uh, That's a crevasse. Yes, please do not fall uh, into it. Okay, all right. I'll set myself on the <laughs> side of it. <laughs> <Whoa>. No! Uh, Button, you were the only one I could tolerate. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. <laughs> Actually, it was pretty cool, too. <laughs> no, yeah, that yeah, the tracks, the tracks. I don't really have a problem with them. They just talk a lot. <laughs> this is a big cavern. I know. <laughs> That's gonna be like so much probably, fall damage. I probably <laughs> could have just dropped a row. <laughs> all right, you should so have control of Alvin like if you if you all you double like click, uh, Zach. You should be able to bring up his character sheet. Oh, oh God! Not on the map. Do you want me to drag myself over? Yes, or... please. Yeah. Okay, because I was looking and I was like, I'm not there. Um. Well, that's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I feel like you guys would be dropping and like yelling like you're falling, and I've already cast Featherfall, and so oh, you're no. going very slowly. <laughs> but since it's deep and dark, you don't quite know the speed you're going, and you're really just going really slowly. So, so, so in terms of terrain, uh, all the uh, icy water on the right and left hand sides, those guys are going to be actual, like, you know, freezing cold water. Don't fall into it. Uh, this crevasse in the middle is an opening that leads directly. Uh, between those ice sheets, but it is filled with water, so it's not like you'll okay. just go. Ah. Okay. You will be in frozen, like freezing cold water, but yeah, just so you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, okay. they have not noticed you yet. This is basically where we're going to mount the attack. So if you want to get your spells uh, into, it, you won't be able to cast, um, like fireball and stuff. But if you had like invisibility prepped and stuff, we can start with that. Okay. Who wants to be invisible then? Is it Anoresa and Button? I'll certainly take it. Yes. Okay. All right. Well, Good. Ani, uh, do you want the one on the right or the left or the middle? Um, I'll just to pick one. I'll say the one on the left. What have you? What about you, uh, uh, 
Uh, Thoro. I'll, I'll take the one on the right. Middle for me, then. All right. All right, so uh, let me see where we're at. Okay, so uh, if you have invisibility on, can you give yourself a little ninja mask? Yes. No, it's up to an hour with concentration, so... But as soon as you do oh. an action, it breaks, right? Yeah. Yep. So okay. you can kind of set up to move in any spot you want. I think mine only lasts around. Hold on. I think so, yeah. You can, like, um, shift to invisible for a round. Or yes, like it says you can magically turn invisible until the start of your next turn or until you attack. Oh. All right. Uh, so uh, what we're going to do is uh, we're on an all-roll stealth, and if you are invisible, then you have mm -hmm. advantage on that check. Okay. And the DC is their passive perception, which isn't great. Their passive perception is 10. Okay. All right, so we have advantage yeah. on soldiers. I think Valtrea did it. Yeah, he got Woo! twenty-one. Hey, <laughs> even 30, yeah, everyone, everyone has a surprise. So you guys are going to have a surprise round on the cold light walkers. Uh, let me delete, okay. remove all turns. Uh, please do not do uh, keep your hands and away from your controllers for just a second. <laughs> and I should be able to add everyone at once. There we go. And now, when you roll your initiative, as long as you're clicking on your dude, everything should be hunky dory. Ah. Uh. You want us to roll initiative now? Yes, please. And you will all go before they get a turn. They'll start in round two if they survive that long. Okay. Ugh. I can't have gone with my other initiative. That's so sad. <laughs> all right. Oops. I wanted to play the music. All right. Uh, just need the Ravens, Chonk, and Alvin. Uh, yeah, so... Oh, I didn't do on for Alvin. I'm, I'll be honest with you, Chris. I'm, I'm not planning on using him in the battle. Do okay. you want me to still... Uh, like, I mean, yeah, he's I, kind of a... I put him in there for balance purposes. These guys are kind of tough. You do have... it. You do have... Um... Does he have his own turn? I don't want to... I don't want to burn Button's turns commanding him. No, no. I'm, he has his yeah, own yeah. turns. He's his own dude. Oh, okay. All right. He's his own owlbear. Yes. He can... He can he's do his own owlbear. I, I've been uh, saying that. <laughs> I can roll initiative for initiative for the ravens is... if you like. What what's the, the I think that should all right. So seventeen for uh, for late. So uh, uh, Tigran just you... stays on my shoulder. All right. So uh, let me double check this. You should be able to access. Yeah, Angel, you have control over this. So Alt double click. Oh, it's right there. Yeah, and it's a little. Yep. There it is. Yeah, it was tiny. Boom. <laughs> all right. Uh, and then so you got. I see Laves. I don't know why it didn't populate. Um, or is it 6 and 17? It's is a 17. Um, Sigrun was supposed to be the 6, but okay. she says it's much older, so it's... All right, I'll do that. Everything look good? Yep. All righty, here we go. So they do not act the first round. Button, you are first, and you are invisible. All right, I very quietly and invisibly pull out my greatsword. And I go, I rage. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Uh, and um, I'm going to go ahead and do that sweet, sweet tabaxi shit where I can move 80 feet. Let's do it. I'm picturing, I'm nice. picturing Button doing like a little like that cat chatter thing where it gets all excited. <laughs> <laughs> it's making like little ek -ek -ek noises. <laughs> yeah, and then quiet. I, uh, um, I very <laughs> ragedly run up to the middle and I just start slashing. Let's do it. I should have advantage on attack one. You do. Because I'm invisible. Oh, damn. All right. All right. Uh, uh, 23. And necrotic, uh, 23 does hit, and that's going to be, what, 22 points of damage? Yeah. Boom. So you just see, like, snow uh, sort of shifts off to the side as Button runs through it and then brings a sword and charges into this creature who shrieks in pain. Uh, it's light moving all over uh, the, the darkness around him. That was your first attack. Do you have another one? I do, uh, and I will um, use... Uh, 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 I will attack recklessly. Okay. So you have advantage, and then the next attacks against you have just... Okay. Uh, so 25 for 12. More damage. Got it. Damn. Mm-hmm. Beaston. All right. 
Good. Yes, I'm, I'm like a beast person. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Tira, you are next. Okay, so the uh, Cold Light Walker right here. We're going to step to step to the side here, and we're going to blast it with two shots from Odor's Blast. You said this guy up here? Uh, that one there, yeah. All right, uh, actually, bonus action, Hex on that one. So okay. I'm going to put like a little marker uh, yeah, on it. Yeah. There we go. And two hits with Eldritch Blast. It's a 15 for 11. That hits. Plus our hits. And do one, one damage. An additional one. one. Got it. Yeah. All right. And. Ooh, crit nope. fail. That's a miss. Just shoots over Eight. him. All right. Uh, he turns his face towards you in anger. Uh, Cold Light Walker can't do shit. He's surprised. Big chunk. Um. Those friendlies in front of you are rough terrain. You only need to count oh. one of them, though. Okay. Um, my speed is 50. Oh. Um, yeah, that works. I'm going to go to the side because I don't want to get in anybody's way. Um, go right here. And we'll, uh, we'll do a bite. Okay. Yeah, I be able to now, Hex only affects you, right, Jack? That's correct. Got yep. it. 19 for 10 piercing damage. I have to make a save, it looks like. Um, strength mm -hmm. saving throw, be knocked prone. Here's my strength saving throw. Uh, 14. I pass. Ugh. Okay. Wait, that's my turn. All right. Uh, Anarissa, you are next, and you are invisible. I am invisible, so I get sneak attack. I don't get a advantage with invisibility, right? Just sneak you, you attack. You get advantage with it. Advantage. Okay. Nope, just checking. I'm used to throwing spells at things, not uh, actually shooting <laughs> things. So... <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's actually going to confer advantage on you to give you the sneak attack if you're targeting mm -hmm. somebody who isn't melee adjacent. Okay. Who did you just shoot at? The one that Big Chunk is next to. Alright, that works. So that does hit with a 17 for a total of 10 damage. Okay. Um, and I am no longer invisible, so I will remove that. And that's really, that, that's all I can do on this one. All right. And then we are now at Leif. Okay. Um, Leif is going to take to the air. Okay. And it's going to fly over here. And going to attack this cold light walker. All right. With a bite attack. Red Baron attack. Here we go. Yeah. 24, oh my god. Damn. Damn. Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 9, 10, 11, 12. Wing attack. It's <laughs> You know, right? And then uh, constitution saving throw. Yep. Um, okay. Uh, just the first one. It was an eight. I, I I failed, so I took the damage. I took the full damage already. Okay. So gotcha. I, I feel like Chris was like, "Yeah, yeah, your character can have two ravens. That's fine. Let me <laughs> let me know their specs." And then Jack's like, "Oh yes, here are their specs." <laughs> <laughs> uh, Cold Light Walker can't do shit. Can't do shit, Captain Toro. All right. So Toro is going to get and is invisible. Yeah. Yes, okay. he is invisible. He is going to shoot with the short bow. This is like how much how much shenanigans can you do with like two ravens? Fifteen uh, damage. Yes. Plus fifteen damage, and he is no longer invisible because he attacked. Right. And then he's going to throw a uh, a psychic blade. Throw, uh, you can throw not, them. You can throw them. Yes. yes, you can. I think the range is like thirty feet or sixty feet, something like that. All right, let's do it. Uh, That's bad it's ass. Not, they it's come in so pints. cool. <laughs> they come in pints. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, I'm a throwing for No sneak attack. No, this advantage. is a normal attack. Uh, yeah. 13, 13 for 5. Yes. And that's my turn. Okay. 13 is their armor class. Okay. Cool. So barely hits as this blade goes through. <laughs> you hear this like pinging <laughs> sound. Uh, yeah. Sigrun. It's just going to stay on my shoulder. Alvin. He's just going to, like, plop down and start licking himself. That works. He comes back with a mustache. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, no. 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 Um. Okay. I'm going to move forward. So about right here. Okay. And then shoot this guy with um, Chaos Bolt. Okay. Um, 
That's level two. Uh, nine will miss. Jeez. Sorry. Anything else? Uh, no. All right. We Wait, are. We do. We have an inspiration from Marguin. Uh, yeah, you do. If you want you to do. Use that. It's up to you. Mm -hmm. Going once. Do going you twice. Want me to use it on this? I, I it's up to you. you. That we have it. If... And. Uh, okay. All right, button, you're up. And now they act. The cold walkers activate. All right. Um. I'm going two attacks, reckless. Okay. Uh, attack number one. Holy shit. Yep, that does it. So 19 damage. Uh-huh. Boom. Oh, wait. No, that's the wrong boom. Boom. That's the right boom. And second attack. Yep. Ooh. Oh, oh, nice. All right, I'm just nice. getting a little rage yeah. thing there. So that's going to be 20 damage. Oh, my gosh. You guys are wrecking these guys. Still alive, but... Wow. That, that's a lot. No! No, there's no fucking way! He's I've critted three times! Alive. If you guys steal my kill, <laughs> I, this is my third crit on these pieces of shit! <laughs> Alright, no. uh, Button, if you're done, it's Tira's turn, so go ahead and finish off that one in front of Button, just so we... <laughs> <laughs> Have the bird come over like... Yeah. <laughs> or just you know, like if I really right. wanted to be if I really wanted to be a jerk about it, we could just keep leaving them for Ani to like just every time on. he gets close to a kill, just like finish it off. But nah. Tira, what okay. are you gonna do? I'm gonna move up just a little adjacent to Valtrea. Uh -huh. And we're gonna fire two um two others blasts at the same cold light walker. All right. Because we don't want to take off button. We've got to sleep at some point. <laughs> I don't want to put it in my shoes because that's gonna be terrible. All right, here we go. All right, first shot, Melder's Blast, 17 to hit. That does hit. 13, so, 19 damage. 19 damage total, got it. Boom. Just racking him with with uh, necrotic second. energy. Second is a dirty 20. 20 for four. Or seven. Seven, including the hex. Very good. Oh, my Going gosh. Yep. They're looking rough. Uh, well done. Uh, is that the end of your turn? I'm going to move back just... Um, just behind Valtrea, All right. so that uh, I'm not sending anybody's way. And yeah, that's me. All right, Cold Light Walker next to Big Chunk goes next. Um, uh, bonus action, Blinding Light. Uh, he stares directly into your face, uh, Big Chunk. You have to make a constitution saving throw. Okay. Sounds fun. Um, ooh. Uh, okay. So, so you just hit the const. If you don't have a constitution yeah. saving throw, you just hit con. Yep. Holy shit! Ooh. Yes. <laughs> all right. All right. Nice. Uh, so <laughs> yes, uh, that did jack shit. I just lick the cold light walker in the face. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, that was a bonus action. Does your tongue get stuck to it like a like a yeah, frozen yeah. bowl? <laughs> <laughs> uh, he's gonna use multi attack on you. Here he goes. <laughs> Hey, yeah, yeah, guys. I was really hoping for that. All right, here comes the the, <laughs> the first of two slams. Uh, twelve. Twelve. Oh, that no. does not hit. <laughs> what about a seventeen? Does hit. All right, so that's going to be um, why is it? Oh, okay. So no, you don't take the fourteen. You take the twelve. So it's eight plus twelve. So Twenty damage. Uh, oh, twelve of that is cold. I don't know if you have anything against cold, but if not, then you're so. at, you're at twenty no. even. Yeah, the fourteen there is a that's the that's the um, average number, but it rolls in the parentheses for some dumb reason. You said it was it. twenty damage. Twenty damage total. Eight bludgeoning plus we twelve. We can't see your roll, Chris. Oh, oh rolls. sorry, it's twenty damage. Okay. I will turn off the um, the things. I don't know if you noticed, Zach, if you've been messing with it, but roll twenty updated themselves, and it's a little different now. Um, I noticed last night that uh, even though I had assigned my tokens to my players, they couldn't control them until I went into the token itself on the map yep. and assigned them again. Mm -hmm. hmm. Yep, there's a lot of funky business going on. Hopefully it's for the better. Um, but yes, I have been having a little bit of issues with the uh, with the tokens, so I apologize mm -hmm. if you can't see everything. You'll just have to trust no, don't, me. Don't <laughs> let it happen again. <laughs> All right. Uh, so uh, that was both attacks. It is Finito, Chonk, you're next. Oh, all right. Um, yeah, we're going to pack tactics. Okay. My pack is a bird. Um, yep, that'll be fine. We're going to bite with advantage. I think they call it pack tactics. Pick tactics, seven damage. <laughs> Critted. All right, seven damage. 
and I have to make a, uh, oh, no, that. a okay. strength saving throw. It's not dead yet? Right? Is it still alive? Yeah, it's still alive. Oh, it's got to have like one hit Yeah, it's going to just be like, hey. Uh, 19, yeah, awesome. I am not prone. Mm. Do. Okay, that's my turn. Okay, uh, let's see here. Anarissa, you are next. Okay, Move right in front prone. of Button. And <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but if that one that Big Chonk is next to is prone, it is that's not gonna... not. I, I didn't say not... knocked prone. I said it is not knocked prone. <laughs> oh, okay. No, I was trying to figure. Knocked, out. knocked. Right. Who's there? Who's there? <laughs> Cold this life walker that is not dead. <laughs> um. Yeah. So I'll shoot that one, and. That will give me sneak attack. Right back. Holy <laughs> shit. Yeah. He has like one nice. hit left and I crit on that one. <laughs> That's so, you awesome. know. Nice. Uh, that Weeks was close. the one in front of Big Chunk, right? Yes. No kill like overkill. All right. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right. It's light just fades away and the corpse crumbles to the ground dead. Well done. Okay. Uh, well, that's my turn. Leif is up next. Leif will probably go for the one closest to him. That's going to be the one in front of Button. <laughs> so he's going he's to swoop for him. He's going to try to peck him right in the side of the head. All right. I want to make the running gag now. <laughs> oh, oh, no. I thought that, I was looking at Anaris's crit again. I thought you rolled. There it is. 23 is still. 23 All right, yes. Uh, that creature, uh, its light fades in front of Button. As Button <laughs> rears up to, 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 to finish it off, this bird comes. Oh. And it's... <laughs> Pluck the bird out of the air. Darkness. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and we'll get uh, Leif will come up behind the other one, and that is, that is it for Leif right now. All right, uh, Cold Light Walker, Texas the Ranger. Last remaining one. <laughs> uh, we'll move here. Bonus action: Blinding Light on Button. Uh, constitution. Uh, con save. Yeah. Can I have my mouse, please? Thank you. You're fine. Shit. All right. Uh, two slams. <laughs> I also shoot light out of my face at him. <laughs> Don't cross the streams. Uh, Here he goes. Fine. You have advantage. You have advantage. Why do I have advantage? Oh, thank you. Thank, I thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You know what? That's a uh, whoops. I shouldn't have had advantage on the con save. I'm going to re-roll. Would you like me to re-roll it? No. Would you like me to re-roll my con save? Let's, I, I'm going to give you a player inspiration for correcting me. Let's re-roll all that. Okay. Con save? Yeah. Because you weren't okay. supposed to have advantage on that. So we'll re-roll all of that. But I gave you an advantage right. to make up for it. Okay. So you start. You mean you gave him an inspiration to make up for it? Yes, yeah. that's what I meant. Wow. Yes. Same number. Same number. All wow. right. So now I am slamming with advantage. Yep. Here's the first. That's how I do too, Chris. You know, I slam with advantage. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> 15. Uh, hits. All right, so that's going to be uh, 32 points of damage. Damn, cold light walker. It's 12, you it's 12, it 12 bludgeoning and 20 okay, so cold. Six. Okay. Me do the... Do minus 20. And... No, come on. And then minus 6 for the bludgeoning. All right. Uh, oh, I found my whisper, so I won't whisper any, anymore. Uh, here comes the yeah, second slam. Yeah, quit being so careless with those whispers. <laughs> <laughs> here we go. No. 24. That does hit. So that's yep. 18 plus 12 cold. You have right. some of that because of the... Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, I have to 9. 15 uh -huh. total. So, yeah, uh, well, 9 and plus 12. You don't have the cold. I don't have oh. the 12, no. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Man. Yeah. Those things hit hard. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Uh, well, that took tough. That was their turn. It is now Toro's turn. All right, Toro is going to move. Uh, actually, Toro's going to. Uh, no, he's just going to move a bit this way. Uh, we are coming in with the short bow. Fourteen uh, for seventeen damage. That does hit. And then the psychic blade. 25 to hit uh -huh. for 16 damage. You don't get a sneak attack on the Psychic Blade. You only get one sneak attack a turn. Oh, okay. So it'll just be the 5. Just the 11. Or, yeah, just the 5 then. Yeah. Boom. Anything else? Uh, No, that's it. All right, Sigrun, anything? No, just remaining on my shoulder for the uh, moment. Alvin? Still licking? He's, uh, you know, he's looking around like, hmm? <laughs> 
<laughs> rolling around, <laughs> making big <laughs> owl pair angels in the snow. Valtrea. Um. Okay, I'm going to move over here and then try to chaos bolt again. All right, let's go. Um, it did. Okay. Oh, crit fail. Oh. It's a miss. I'm going to take a nap. <laughs> uh, <laughs> All right, button. Uh, that hurt a lot, mm -hmm. so I'm going to go ahead and keep recklessly attacking it. Okay. That'll hit for 17, say that's what, 23? 23. Yes. Mm -hmm. Boom. And then... Uh, and my second swing. Oh! Hey! <laughs> 15. It is barely alive. Oh, no. Oh, Chris! Oh! Dude, you I'm not... I'm no! Not, no! No! I don't care. DM it. Oh take God. away that one. Take away that oh. one hit point. That is my fourth crit on a cold oh. white walker. Oh. You cannot keep robbing me of these kills. That is absurd. That is absurd. Oh. And I will not stand for it. This is the hill I die on. Right away. <laughs> there you go. Just so you can no, see. No, it's no, no, two. It's two points. It's got two oh, points left. Tira. Oh, oh this is great. Well, 15, 20, 25, 30. <laughs> no trench blast. Well, actually, um, as we're moving, we're going to go ahead and move X over to it just in case. Okay. So, just X, in case. X on it. Eldritch blast. Nope, not hitting with that Missed. one. Oh, that, that one, one does, does hit. hit. Uh, yeah. And and so thank good goodness you were there. It. You were there. To <laughs> no! <laughs> <laughs> and with that, the final cold walk, the cold light walker falls dead. That could not have gone better. <laughs> Tira's going to look at Button and she's like, you softened him up for me. <laughs> softened all of them up! I just, I just squeeze the snow. <laughs> <laughs> all right uh now that you've seen more of these creatures in in in, um, in action and you see that they have the uh the regalia of the uh ragged wolf tribe uh button i guess the the legends are true uh if they are consumed by this strange material that you haven't quite come across yet then it t tends to uh overtake them and they become Oriel's pawns, which are apparently being sent looking for something. Is it <laughs> this? That's Miranix from Targos. <laughs> All right. So with that, looking guys... Looking for their quick demise. <laughs> the, um, the, the rest of the journey uh, to Targos goes uh, fine. It, it's, it's not too long of a travel there. You get there within the same uh, day, so it, it I think it's a four-hour journey from Termalane to Targos. Uh, so you make it there, and you meet with uh, um, Myrnix at the uh, the couple's house that you uh, helped save from the Yeti. Uh, and they welcome you in. Uh, you explain the situation with the Cold White Light Walkers, and they um, they haven't seen them around here. In fact, they've heard legends, but they've never seen one in real life. I've almost killed three of them. <laughs> um, and uh, they offer you their, their house and home. Uh, you realize if you continue to travel today, you could you could make it to Bryn Shander. Uh, they do allow you to uh, take a short rest in their home. So we're going to just take a quick little break in real life and come back uh, and uh, continue on our way from there. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Table Hops and our Rhyme of the Frost Maiden campaign where the characters have just been traveling through Icewind Dale fighting some cold light walkers. Um, unfortunately, Button was unable to kill even a single one. Um, but uh, <laughs> they made it safely to the town of Targus uh, where they have uh, reunited with uh, the couple that they have um, saved, uh, both uh, Keegan and Garrett. Uh, in Targos, who uh, allow them to rest. Now, some things are... Uh, Toro, did you get all my stuff? I did, yes. All right, both things? Yes. All right, I, cool. I did the thing that you told me to do, and I will be acting accordingly. All right, sounds good. Um, you, The rest of you, the only thing you notice is uh, Toro's nose is bleeding. Oh. Um, oh. But you don't know I whether that got, happened in the fight? You don't think he got hit, but... From the cold, Toro, wipe your uh, wipe your nose. Oh, uh, sorry. Uh, uh, Are you some... okay? 
Uh, yes. Uh, when it gets very cold, sometimes I get nosebleeds. Uh, it's nothing to worry about, I promise. It's been very cold the entire time we've been here, and you've never gotten a nosebleed. Well, yes, it would it be cold. Very to occasionally. You. You're from the south. It's very cold for you. This is. I'm not it? from that far south. Hmm. It's like a right. summer's day down there. It's permanent new winter where I live. <laughs> <laughs> They were like, oh, we're just like way hard. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, is there anything you'd like no, to say? No, it's just when. Uh, Mir- it's windshield, that's so bad. Mir- You're decides, feeling okay, though? Really quick, guys. Mirnix decides to uh, hang with uh, Garrett and Keegan um, until they are able to play again. Hmm. Okay. I get it. The gay couple are way cooler than the rest of us. We're not offended yeah. much. It's a lot safer <laughs> here. <laughs> and warmer. And warmer. Sure. Well, yeah. does, does one of us want to take the uh, the star thing then, since we're going to continue on to Brinchander? Yeah, who wants yeah. to hold that? <clears throat> um, I'll volunteer because I am fire resistant. <laughs> so. <laughs> okay. So you have it. That was that was the original decision between me and Mirnix was that someone who is <laughs> flame retardant should uh <laughs> so, should have um, it. If you guys are all done resting, we can continue the travels to Bryn Shander. Anything you wanted to talk to or ask uh, the couple before you head off? Hey Chris, what does our house look like? Um, it's a small house near the south end of Targos. It, it's a it's a it's a ranch style home without a second floor. Uh, so it has a single bedroom, uh, a small kitchen, and then a little den with a fireplace, which is where you're resting right now. Uh, Boy has been um, you know happy to see you. Uh, he did notice when he got closer to, to Toro, even though they got along earlier, he seems to growl, and after a while started um, whining and went back to the far side over where Natel was. Huh. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, I like, I give him a good little scruff and I just look at Toro. I'm like, mm, you're not telling us something. <laughs> um, one of the guys was the one that did all the little carvings and everything, right? Correct. Could I get him to make me a tiny little kobold with a mustache? <laughs> that's a that's a strange request, but uh, yeah, uh, f- for you uh, on the house, since you, uh, I owe you my husband's life. Let me, uh, I'll, I'll give it to Mirnix when, uh, when I've completed the project. Oh, thank you. Hey, Chris, are there knickknacks in this house? Uh, yeah, there's many things around. Uh, a lot of those Scrimshaw um, carvings. He kind of like, y- you know, how some people have like those small <laughs> gnomes or dolls around their, their living room. There's a lot of that going on here. Gotcha. It's like a things I remembered. I, I want I want a sleight of hand to steal one. All right, go ahead. I will uh, roll an insight. Uh, okay. Uh, actually, uh, okay. What is the high? What is everyone's passive perception? I was about to say, I've been, like, looking at him ever yeah. since the dog started growling, and my passive perception is a 17. Okay. You're, you're mine's, yeah, mine's 13, but I've been watching him, too, so I'm willing to, like, run a perception check against him, just because well, I'm watching so for, like, the crystal It's going to be a sleight of hand check against the 17 for Toro. Okay. Okay. Oh, that's don't, a nat 20. Don't, don't notice shit. All right, what do you take? Ooh. Uh, ju- it doesn't matter. Like, so you take a something, sauce. something small that I okay. can just like slip into a pocket. Okay, <laughs> sorry. I just imagine this giant scrimshaw like orca whale, and next to it, you're like, let's go with the seahorse instead. <laughs> 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 okay, none of you noticed this happen. You kind of do it when you turn to wipe your your nose. Yeah. So yeah. yes, you have now that item. One is your nose continuing to bleed? Even no, it's not like gushing blood. It's just like, yeah, like a... It is, but it hasn't clotted yet. Like, it's still an active bleed. No, they've, they've taken care of it at this point. Oh, okay. That's what we were trying to figure out. Like, was it, like, not stopping? <laughs> so... <laughs> uh, are we... Actually, I was... Are we looking... I mean, because a couple of us are paying attention to Toro. Like, are we noticing any other, like behaviors or things that because every now and then they kind of look off to the side as if they're distracted but nothing like nothing like as avert as Valtrea with the drinking yeah no I mean if I haven't done so before I'm going to make sure I mean we were talking in a group so the others should know that 
Toro has it, but Natel may not. Natel and Vateria probably don't know, so I'll probably like very quietly let them know that he definitely has it now, and we should be watching. Because just because he's not presenting the way Valtrea was doesn't mean it's not affecting him in some way. Uh, Chris, after he takes the little screenshot seahorse or whatever, he goes and just sort of like slouches like against the door, uh, sort of away from everyone else. Okay. Like keeping people from getting out of the door? No, no, no. Like near the door. Not like against the door, but uh, sort of. <laughs> I've done my thing and I'm ready to go now. Yes. yes. <laughs> uh, yeah, Jack, I got your message. One second. Hey. Doesn't say willing. Uh, yes, you. I'll text you what you hear. Okay. And this is. Uh, Tira. Natal, can yes, you okay. can you ask the boy why he doesn't like Toro anymore? Oh, I could. Um. But I read that ability wrong the first time, and I won't actually be able to understand him. Gotcha. <laughs> yeah. Sound. And I don't think I have speak with animals prepared. Okay, you should have gotten that. Not. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Just sort of look at him very curiously. And just... Sort of... But... I mean, I don't know. So the couple seems to be, they, they feel the tension in the room and uh, they, they we, we hope you have a great time in, in Bryn Shander. I, I guess it's probably best you get on your way now. Thank you so much for your hospitality. Oh, of course, yes. anytime. And, and I'll get working right on that, uh, that, uh, that small, I, I've worked on a few small things. Uh, I'd show you, but I can't seem to find one right now. Huh, Okay. Well, I really appreciate it. I loved all the other things that you sent with us, and I'm so glad that despite losing your friends, the two of you were able to have a happy reunion. All right, they smile at each other. It's like, yes, all thanks to you. And with that, you leave the couple. Um, Blue comes out from behind one of the chairs. Or sorry, not Blue, the different different game. Boy. And they say, <laughs> good girl, boy. And then you continue on your... Uh, <laughs> All right, so traveling between, let me go back to the Icewind Dale map. And we should be heading to Bryn Shander. Why can't I see anything? All right, so this is only going to be about an hour's travel from, they're pretty close together. Uh, same um, same uh, setup as before. And now we see okay. what happens. There, there's something fun about this because I don't know what happens between the towns. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> were the were the cold light walkers earlier a random encounter or was yes. that planned? They were random. Oh, okay. Um Oh. Talk amongst yourselves for a minute. Uh oh. Okay. Um <laughs> I go over to Tira and uh I say that I saw you looking at Toto earlier. Are you thinking the same thing that I'm thinking? <laughs> I don't know what you're thinking, Natal. Your head is very high up there. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> that's better. That's true. Um, I'm thinking that maybe he had a little bit too much contact with that crystal. Yeah, I think you're probably right. Um, there was... <sighs> A very strange, I guess, something is weighing on his mind, and it makes a very particular chiming sound, like his psychic blades make. Hmm. It's huh. rhythmic, like like a drum beat, or like a little bell. Huh. But some... You know, that's... Okay. That sounds kind of similar to what the Valtrea was going through. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it does. I'm thinking okay. that's probably had too much contact with the crystal already. As much of a pain in the ass it's going to be, I think we need to nip this in the bud right now before it gets any worse. I need a volunteer mm -hmm. to roll a d8. 
I'll do it. Okay. Four. Okay. To tell, are you are you talking just to Tira, or are you guys telling some of the others? Oh, I was just I was just talking to Tira. Yep. No, it's fine. I'm just making sure that I don't jump in and role play when I'm actually not paying attention. I'm clearly with the sled dog playing with the sled dog. So. So um, f as you're traveling, uh, sort of a you're not going at a full fast pace. You're traveling, uh, you know, at a moderate speed between the towns. Flying above in a circular pattern, you see a snowy owl flying around in a circle, which is strange because there's no um, forests around here. It seems kind of out in the middle of nowhere. Uh, you this have, is the same suspicious snowy it's a little, owl. It's a little too high in, the, in, high in the sky to see. Sarah, can Leif or Sigrun go check it out? Yeah, Leif. Away. So Leif will start, you know, flying its way up there, doing its little cool raven glide thing, which sort of like circles up. Okay, so it flies up. Um, what senses do you get? All of them? Yeah, I can I can detect through Leif's senses. Um, I'm personally blinded for the duration. Right. But yeah, anything that Leif can see or perceive in any fashion, okay, I, so I have access to. You fly, uh, uh, Leif flies up and gets closer to this uh, snowy uh, creature. You see that it doesn't have any of the, um, how can I describe this for you? It, it, it doesn't have the same markings as the other snowy owl you saw. I don't know enough about um, owls. It doesn't have the dark spots that would indicate a male um, snow owl. It seems uh, uh, paler, uh, slightly smaller. This is a, a female of the species. Um, and as you fl Leif flies up to it, the owl says, Oh, hi. You're not a bird at all now, are you? <laughs> Squawk? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Leif will, Leif will answer it. It's speaking, I assume, in common? Uh, yes. Um... And no, no, I am not a bird. Well, you do a pretty good imitation of one. Are those your friends down there? They are. I've had a lot of practice. Interesting. This whole speaking thing is a little new to me. But you're doing a good job considering you also have a beak. Uh, thank you. <laughs> it is a little awkward. <laughs> so what exactly are you doing here? Assuming you're not a bird as well. Well, no, uh, my master awakened me, and then he scampered off somewhere, and I've just been flying around, and then I heard this strange noise, and I've just been sort of flying around trying to follow it. So, the the noise? What kind of noise? It's like a, it's like a ding, and it happens over and over, and it seems the further south I go, the faster it goes. I, my master might have heard the same noise then. Well, we can go ask them. We could. We could. Perhaps you should wait here while I announce that you're going to be flying down. Otherwise, they might react poorly. Okay, just hurry. I need, I need to land soon. I'm quite tired. You really should learn how to glide. It's so much easier. That's true. <laughs> with, and Brave, Leif would do that thing with the ravens where they just start like tumbling to earth and tumbling <laughs> to earth. And like right before it gets to the ground, it just like spreads out its wings and just sort of lands. Nice. So I was yeah. like, show off. <laughs> yeah. So yes, uh, Leif, will, um, Leif will land back on Tira's shoulder and uh, let her know that indeed this thing is seems to be some sort of awakened familiar um, whose master has, has left it. And that it too... Um, is hearing this this noise, but this would all be a telepathic conversation. He wouldn't necessarily have to communicate in common to her. So, show everybody else in the party know that yeah, this this bird is following us. It doesn't seem hostile, but it seems to be an awakened familiar from some sort of spellcaster who has let it roam. I thought we have to spell. Why is it come back? 
<laughs> we're used to people sending their various animals to us to ask for things. So, I mean, sure, why it's not? <laughs> Still, um, I have to think that perhaps even if it doesn't seem hostile, maybe discretion is good in this case. Maybe we should just be wary of it at first. Fair um, enough. I yeah. agree. Did it say who its master was? It did not. Hmm. Did you ask and it wouldn't tell you, or did you just not bring it up? I didn't even think about it. That's all okay. right. If it speaks common, we can ask it soon enough. Yeah. yeah, we can just say we can, you know, we can tell him if we've seen his master, if we know who he is or what he looks like. So easy enough to throw that in the conversation. I'm still here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we'll send we'll send uh, Leif back up to go ahead and let him know that it can it can land, it can land on the on my dog sled. Okay, so uh, Leif goes up, r- conveys the method message, and this owl comes flying down and lands gracefully on top of the dog sled. And he looks towards you and says, "Well, hello, everybody." Wait, he can just talk. He can just talk. <gasps> oh my gosh! Hello. <laughs> well, hi. <laughs> You're all very interesting looking people. Don't see a lot of people out here. We don't see a lot of talking owls out here. Well, I don't think fair. I've ever seen a talking owl before. Well, except for myself, I haven't but... always been a talking owl. <laughs> this is very new to me. I enjoy talking very much. What were you before you were a talking owl? Just an owl. <laughs> oh. How long ago was that? Well, how... Um, you said up there to Leif that you had previously um, been given sentience, I believe. Yes, my you master... You were familiar? Oh, no, no, I'm not, I'm not a, I'm, I'm not a familiar. I, I wish one day maybe I would be, but no, I was just awakened by, by my master and, and she wanted to know if, uh, if, if I was able to help with, I don't really know exactly, something about this darkness that is happening here they uh, I didn't really understand everything I had just learned the language to be fair uh, and then I th- that may be why my master sort of left me here oh, who is your master I didn't actually get her name I would just called her master like the other beasts did, did you what, um, for but and what did that person that lady that you're looking for look like again she wasn't an animal lover, but she, uh, pale skin, snow white almost, raven black hair. Is that what your master looked like? The DM is quickly checking. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, you know. I didn't see them in a form like yours. My master generally took the form of of an owl sort of like me. That's what kind of drew me to her to begin with. That's when I found out it was a her when they started speaking. It looked like a him. But it's an owl. It doesn't really matter. Like a... Like a large owl? Quite large, yes. Huh. Like larger than owls in here, or...? Oh, no, no, not that large. Like my size, just a little bigger. Oh, okay. But sometimes, he, my master would turn into a great bear, or perhaps a, the, one of the reindeers with their glowing antlers. Oh, okay, so another druid. I don't think I've met another druid since we've been up here, though. Interesting. All I know well... is that they, they worshipped someone named Oriel. And they took that very seriously. Uh. <laughs> Lots of people around here do that. Yes, you people are no, quite not... strange. But I, I have to tell you, do you hear that? Isn't that strange? Isn't that a strange sound? Hear what? Are you talking about the that like that chiming noise? Yes, I. It's it's endless. It it's like this bing, 
bing, and it's been happening ever since I... It was very faint when I was in Kelvin's care and around there, and then I came further south, and it just kind of got faster and louder. I didn't help you. Can we can't hear it? Well, uh, I'm sorry, but I need to find out what it is. I hope maybe I'll run into you again soon. And with that, he start. Uh, she spread or spreads out her wings to um, fly away. Um, oh, your um, name. Before you go, oh, yes. is there a name we can call you? Well, my master never gave me a name. But you can Could call you me. Could you give yourself a name? No one's ever asked me that before. I, we don't really worry about names. We each kind of have our own just presence to us. But uh, if you want to give me a name, that's totally fine. Totally radical, I would say. <laughs> <laughs> Theodora. A... Say that again. Theodora. Theodora. I like Theodora. that. I like that uh, we'll call you Dora for sure. Yes, I, I would love that very much. And Theodora... Um, um, Would you like um, I, I take out like a, from my ration pack to give her like a little strip of like beef jerky or something? Oh, delicious! Yes, very much. Thank you. And she goes on to introduce herself to each of you in turn. And you relay your names, and each time she says, "Yes, my name is Theodora," <laughs> and says it each time. <laughs> <laughs> That's so cute. All right, so, so she. So now we have Alvin and Theodora. Uh-huh. <laughs> 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 Just need a sign. Uh, Just need a sign. Be uh, <laughs> a Simon. Well, a Simon. We'll, we'll get yeah, one. Yeah. So, um, no, we'll get so they they follow uh, ten trails, uh, that red line south, and they fly off into the horizon. Mm. All right, uh, the rest of the travels to Bryn Shander goes without any um, any any problems. Now that okay. you're in here, uh, let me get out Bryn Shander really quick and give it. Let me see it. You might just see a black screen for a second. I'm not entirely. No, you see this. You see this. There it is. All right. Ta-da. Ta-da. Uh, so there's a couple places in here that you may recall. Black Iron Blades is the uh, name of the uh, smithy that you uh, have a discount with because of your um, <coughs> past experiences with Clan, Clan Battlehammer. The North Look is the uh, inn that you uh, met, you all met at before. Um, but other than that, you're not really sure. This this is out of all the towns. This town is quite big, but even then, it's smaller than one uh, of the districts in in Waterdeep, so it's not huge. Mm. Well, we haven't seen too many gnomes up here. Would a smaller house that's made for like a gnome stand out? Uh, well, I mean, it would take you a while to go through the town and try and find a small house. But you should know. Something about it, uh, about copper, from the note that you got that you yeah, found. Yeah, uh, he, right, right. he lives in the house of the Morning Lord, I believe is what I have written down here. Um, yep, copper, the house of the Morning Lord in Bryn Chander. Okay. So if we can ask somebody directions, like one of the um, you know, bar keeps or something, they would probably know what this is. Let's so, find a random person on the street. Yeah. yeah. Hello, so it's might... me, the wacky wizard. <laughs> <laughs> Pass. I'm looking for a gnome named Copper. Uh, so when you when you ask about a gnome named Copper, they 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 don't know anyone in particular. But when you mention the house of the Morning Lord, they say, Ah, yeah, it's the temple to the north over there. There's an arrow pointing to it on your screen. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so a giant arrow pointing in the sky. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so, uh, yeah. I, I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> uh, where is that exactly? All right, so you head over uh, past uh, the Market Square. And you see a modest uh, converted house uh, that serves uh, as a gathering place. Um, and uh, above it, uh, you see... I don't know what the symbol of this god is. Oh, uh, a sun. Sorry. You see a sun, mm -hmm. uh, which is ironic in the darkness around you. But uh, opening the door, uh, you see a small worship area. There is a... Um, uh, is it a... What was this? Uh, there, there is a woman uh, near what looks to be an altar, but definitely not a. You don't see a gnome. Well, we could ask though. Yeah, certainly. Yeah, so I can walk up to the lady and and uh, excuse me. Um, we're looking for someone named Copper, and we were told he might be here. Do you happen to know? Uh, well, yes, I I know Copper. What, what what do you want with him? Uh. 
We have some information about a friend of his that uh, we need to pass along. Uh, sure, he's probably upstairs in his room. Uh, she gestures up to the second uh, floor area. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Uh, and may uh, uh, Omanator bless your way. Omanator. Omanator. Sorry, I'm looking at the pronunciation guide. <laughs> That's not what well, she thanks. says. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm new to this religion. <laughs> we have pamphlets. Yeah. Um, again, you see that same uh, golden sun sigil on the on the altar, mm. and you right. he- you head up. Okay. Uh, there is a small uh, ladder that leads up to a trap door. <laughs> Oof, how small is it? Uh, it's 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 not it's not that small that it would give a furball any trouble. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, okay. So, so I'm going to go up to the trap door and do a very peculiar knock. Specifically the knock I do on Nim's door. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, okay. Uh, the the As your hand reaches up to knock on the door, uh, almost to the rhythm of that you were, would do for um, the, the construct, the door opens uh, just as uh, the woman below you says, may... Uh, uh, a monitor's um, blessings be upon you. This gnome r- shouts down below. You mean Lathander, don't you, Mishan? And then she says, "No, I mean exactly what I say." No, get back up there. Your friends have something to tell you. And he looks at you. He's like, "Friends, eh? Uh-huh. Come on up." All right. I Are guess. You guys having like an argument over gods? It's whose god has a bigger, you know? Is this the temple following? of Lathander? Or the monitor. It's the Temple of the Morning Lord. Ah. Mm. I guess that title is in some dispute. Oh. So, uh, okay. you, oh. you have... I'll throw my name in. I also... Both? <laughs> <laughs> Why not both? So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you go upstairs, and uh, as you crawl into this uh, this attic, the, the, the roof is exceptionally short. You can still get in there, but uh, Natel, uh, Button, uh, uh, Toro, you all have to hunch down. Even Valtrea and, and Arissa, you kind of, like, don't care just a little bit. Uh, Tira, it is like just at your height, uh, but this uh, this gnome <laughs> oh, can God. walk around it no problem. If you get to the sides of the room, it's it's kind of an awkward situation. But you see small tables set up with uh, strange uh, gears, springs, different like devices. It looks like it, it does remind you a lot of uh, the constructs room from Waterdeep. I uh, I look over at his desk and I see something and I just kind of like touch it a little bit bing touch it. bing and then i and then i, and then I, knock, I knock it off <laughs> his desk <laughs> damn it button be careful <laughs> i'm sorry i sometimes i i forget <laughs> now what what so, what can i do for you slam the door stop <laughs> so <laughs> we were told to look for a gnome by the name of copper who is here in grand chanda hi that's me um, y- y- yes so we have gathered. Um, my ravens and I overheard a conversation about a cabin uh, that was uh, the site of what might have been, they said, either hauntings or some sort of magic um, that were done just north of Timberland. So uh, when you mention this, the first thing he does is he puts in a quip about you being bird-brained, having talking to your ravens, and he's kind of playing it off. And then he's, as you mentioned, the cabin. <laughs> as he as he ma- mentions the... She's uh, just going to shoot a tell him look. Watch this. <laughs> as um, <laughs> as um, he, uh, you mentioned the black cabin, he's like, uh, yeah, my friend up there, he, he's kind of an eccentric, uh, so I wouldn't... Uh, surprise me that some of the locals might have their superstitions ruffled. Much like the feathers well, of your birds, because he's a bird brain guy. So did you see? <laughs> I keep laughing. <laughs> yeah, keep it up, Natalia. We'll keep talking to you too. <laughs> so, I sit down. <laughs> good girl. So, Copper, you might actually want to sit down for this, maybe. All right. Um, your friend, Macredis. Macredis. Uh, he... Yes, that's what I said. <laughs> um, he is deceased. All right, you see uh, mm-hmm. this sort of rough exterior gnome, a look of like le- legitimate sadness crosses over his face as you, he's like, 
Are you sure? He's blown himself up before. Um, I am... I am a follower of the Raven Queen. I spoke with him. I spoke with his corpse. He is certainly dead. Oh. But he has tasked us with passing on and finishing his work that he said was connected to something called the Summer Star. She's, uh, uh, Copper looks towards him he's like, Oh no. Is that what killed him? I kind of go in my bag and I carefully pull out this contraption and I go, I'm not sure this was beside him. Uh, as soon as oh, you take it out, he's like, oh, wait, 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 wait. Oh, oh. And he like puts his hands out to take it from you. I let him. I just hold like, very still. Be very, very careful with this. And he gently places it on the table as if it's the most valuable object. Reach out to it. No. <laughs> <laughs> it was, <laughs> Knock it off the table. <laughs> Boom. Keep eye contact with him at all time. <laughs> uh, Is it That's important so to you? Uh, he uh, was wearing this, or it could have been inside him. I don't know. He was a bit of a ashy mess by the time I found him. And I, I'll, I'll hold out the medallion that he was wearing. Okay, uh, he takes it from you. Uh, give me a second, guys. Sorry, I lost my page. Books. Books and things. Tira, didn't he also mention that he was bound to the place until his work was finished? Until his work, yes, he did. Yeah, so he's not even resting at this point. He's just there. So, uh, taking the, um, the, the amulet, um, he says, I, "I, this is, this was his sigil. This is, this is uh, Lathander's symbol. Uh, me and me and Macrius both worshipped the the true, the true Morning Lord." He yells a little too loudly, and then <laughs> um, it's like uh, we. He had this notion that we could use this artifact to end the 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 Oriel's endless winter, but. I told him it was too dangerous, and he, he was just adamant that it would work, and obviously it didn't. There were notes about there being three better than two. Yeah, the, the winter certainly ended for him. Oh, but, yes, in, in that case, I guess it worked. Damn, button. <laughs> were you talking about the outer rings on the device? Because we have the parts from what we think might have been the outer ring. Um, but we're not sure how to put it all together. Okay. Um, it's like, yes, it, it was my idea to add the third ring, but he he wouldn't have anything of it. He said, no, they needed to do the ritual immediately. And, and I tell you, I, just, I couldn't deal with that man anymore. That's why I left. But if, if you have it, I suppose I, I could complete the, the work, but I, I warn you, I can't guarantee the safety. No one's ever used this before. You do know what this can do. We kind of saw it. We don't know what the device is supposed to do, but we saw the aftermath of what it did. Well, if we can get this to work, it allows the user to control the weather. You can see how valuable this would be. Mm. Yeah. Sure. I, I really know it makes it worth pursuing, I think. I think a group of people, a terrorist organization was looking for like pieces to it, and they were fighting against the, the, a man named Joe. Uh, Cobra, I think they were called. <laughs> God damn it. The, uh, the weather for how far? Like, what's the distance? Uh, I, can't, I can't be sure. However, I mean, it won't... It won't cure all this, Copper says, gesturing towards the darkness around you, but I'm hoping at least for an area, if if some people see hope, and we can construct this, maybe this could lead to larger versions, and eventually, with enough time, we could end the night by using devices such as this one. If only they weren't so dangerous. Now, you mentioned my my friend who's fallen. He... he you spoke with him. So he's trapped, you said? 
Uh, yes, his, his soul um, cannot rest. He said he spent months trying to end this winter. Um, he was a follower of the Thunder in his life. His house and his workshop were where we found him. And he told us we were to finish his work and to free his spirit. And that the orb that we found, the summer star, is the key to finishing his work. <sighs> this is worse than I thought. I, Like you said, it has a limited radius, so I, I assume if I am to fix this, you, if you use it, you'll have to use it where his spirit is. <sighs> I can offer you no payment. Why do you want to do this? I don't. Fair enough. Well, if that's his soul free, I think that's a payment enough. But then if it also brings an end to this winter, or the possible end to it, then I mean, that's, that's kind of priceless. That is that is our goal, ultimately, is ending the winter and the eternal night. Yes, there's also a giant crater that this town could become. Well, I will complete the ring, as you've asked. And uh, I'll await your return. It'll take me a, a couple of days to finish it. Um, I will not activate the device. There's no no danger there. Uh, I'll just create the ring and mount it. And you can let me know when you're ready to head back to Tourmaline, and I will accompany you with the, with the device. Unless you'd rather me not. But I don't think any of you are trained in how to use it. Mm -hmm. No, I believe if you know how to use it, then you're more than welcome to come with us. Right. It's probably someone with your level of expertise coming with us would probably be the best shot of it, both working and, you know, not um, blowing things up again. So yes, uh, I I'll need I'll need time to work on this. C come back in, in a couple of days, and I, I should be able to complete it by then. Um, he he sort of sadly looks at the device in his hands as if he didn't want to see this again. Um, and yeah. he, he's silent, waiting for you to leave. Yeah, so I think we should probably... We should probably go. <laughs> Alright, you... Thank you, you Copper. Yes, you're welcome. And and you leave. As you open the door uh, in, and the floor and climb down the staircase, uh, you hear um, the woman below, Michonne was apparently her name, she says... Uh, I hope the, uh, I hope Omonitor does, oh, Omonitor, God, this name is, Omonitor, Omonitor, I put the wrong emphasis, in the wrong. I hope Omonitor uh, <laughs> blesses your way, and she says that rather loudly, and then smiles, looks towards the, um, the, the, the room above, but there's no response as he exits. So now you're in the middle of Bryn Shander. Mm. Odd place to worship the sun. That's very true. So uh, let me bring you back over to Dim World's maps and sort of give you a whatchamadoodle about what's going on because there, there is a lot and we can decide how we want to continue. So you guys are located in Bryn Shander currently, okay? Um, you know that Tavis would like to meet with you in a few days' time uh, in Kier Kionig, which I put a little square around over here. Um, you also um, have heard that that sound that um, Toro is apparently hearing is also being heard by some animals, and it seems to be leading south. So, with all this going through your mind, you uh, head towards the um, the north wind, the, the the tavern. Look, because now you do need to rest for the night. What are you all thinking of doing? What, what are you thinking of? Uh, how are you thinking of continuing? Well, I mean, if we're going to Kirikona, I guess, to meet Tavis, it is north. Everything is to be north here. So in... Um, in oh, sorry, really? Just, just to... So I make, in RPG terms that make no sense, uh, these are not... He's going to meet you there in some number of days. So I don't want you to feel rushed one way or the other. You guys can decide. Oh. Yeah, RPG uh, logic. Saying in that general northern direction is the Black Cabin, Chapter 2. Or 3, who knows? <laughs> <laughs> well, so uh, here, the Black Cabin oh. is this. It's Tamerlane. Yeah. It's over right. here. You have to go around Kelvin's camp. Yeah. Right. Tra yeah, traveling, as silly as it sounds, traveling from... 
Kier Keonig directly across the tundra and Kelvin's Cairn to the Black Cabin would take you longer than going around the long way. Right. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. Mm. So if you went, you'd have to go like back down here and back over here and down and over there. Hooray, we did it. That would be faster. Well, it, it would be about the same as going this way. This way would just be much more diff- uh, dangerous. Yeah, yeah. You can do that. Um, it's up to you. You also would need to come back to Bryn Shander to get the device. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, we wouldn't head to the cabin until we had the device anyway. Right. So, I mean... How long did Copper say it would take for him to finish the device? A certain number of days that's awkwardly convenient. Okay. I see. Ah, I see. <laughs> um... I'd hate to go into a situation without knowing as much about it as we possibly could. So if it means yeah. meeting Tavis to get a little more information before we just start throwing ourselves at the problem, I would urge caution. Sure. And mm-hmm. I mean, Tavis, he might have thoughts as well. So, Were we not tasked with uh, finding out about these murders? Uh, yeah. we're, like we have a, we have goals. I, I don't I don't trust this orb. I don't I don't think that it's a smart bet. I think that it uh, clearly ignited the person the last person to use it. I don't know that adding another ring will make it safer. Uh, I don't know much about these sorts of things anyway, but if the tinkerer says it'll help, then I trust his opinion more than my own. I, know, I think that you don't walk away if the only difference between it working and ending an endless winter and not working is adding a, a third ring on top of it. Well, he also complained about his food, so, you know. Fair. It sounded right. like, it sounded like, and I'm blanking on the other name, McCratus. 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 Um, wanted to rush it. He wanted to, he didn't want to yeah. wait for that third ring, no. so it sounds like, it sounds like Copper left because he since he wasn't going to be allowed to finish it, he wasn't going to be there when it when stuff happened. It was the two so, scientists. One wants to go ahead with a plan that'll save everybody. The other one wants to use caution and take more time. That sort of thing. Yeah. Mm. Or, or, I follow. Yeah. No, I know. Just, I put I just care. Uh, Den- I put care Dinevel on the map just to show you. There's another town in between that you could rest at. It's oh, okay. not like a long. At- oh, I mean, it's still pretty long. The east way is quite long. But yeah. 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 Well, I'm just looking at the map too because it looks like we go over and up, but there isn't a town at that X in the middle. Correct. So there is there is so, one a little further south, but that seems uh, I didn't put it on there because it seems out of your way. Yeah. No, I was yeah. just trying to figure like, would we have to rest on the road between Bryn Shander and Care Dineval? Um, I do not believe so. I think it, it is a it, you could do it in a day, especially with in your a day. yeah. This place is not as big as it looks. It's a little convoluted, but it's yeah, fifteen miles. You could do mm-hmm. that in a day. Oh, okay. Yeah. Normally, you could travel longer than fifteen miles, but even with the roads, travel here is rough. Yeah, mm. that's fine. Um, I don't know. I think we should hang around in Bryn Shander until he finishes it. That way we can go to Tavis with the most information as possible. And if it takes him a few days, then we can at least continue. Yeah, it, Tavis uh, wants to, wasn't in a rush. We can we can take our time yeah. and come with him with more information. Yeah. We could also appreciate. keep an ear to the ground uh, for any more of the strange murders. Yeah, from, from any the more way, leads on the vampire. From the way Copper was discussing it, when he's done, he's going to go to Tourmaline. Yeah, so maybe we need to hang hang close? It depends on what you want. Like, um, mm. how can I put this? You he's going to go there one way or another if once he, he's yeah, done. Yeah, when he's done, he's going to oh, okay, go. Okay. He's not going to gotcha. wait for you. He said he'll come with you if you want to come with, but he can't. He, does, he thinks right. this is partially his responsibility, so he's going to take it and go. Okay. okay. But he will wait for you if. But he won't go to Kier Koenig. Right, yeah. right. I I didn't mean like yeah. bring him to Kier Koenig. I just meant like get like if he finishes the device, then we can get more information about like exactly what he thinks it will do. Yeah, um, he won't let you take how it. How effectively we could use it. Yeah, that's fine. 
I, I just mean, Lysus. like, if we're going to meet with you Tavis, just we should him. have as much information as possible. You could eat him. <laughs> <laughs> totally viable. Uh, Toro, did you get my uh, thingy thingy? I did. I just wanted to. I didn't just want to make sure you got it. No, the totally strategic fine. Strategic planning. All right. Yeah. Um, uh, how many people are in the tavern that we're in? Uh, it's it's not <laughs> as busy as some of the. Uh, it's it's. Oh, let's see. It's going to be about dinner time. It's it's decently crowded, but not like shoulder to shoulder overcrowded. It's gotcha. Just, yeah. Okay. Uh, at some point during the discussion, um. Toro will wait for a strategic moment when he sees several patrons like up and moving uh, and will head uh, to you know that thing like when thieves will, like bump into someone and try to pick their pocket sure that's that's the goal here all right so that's gonna be sleight of hand um, I'm gonna okay. say that the regular dude has a, uh, a passive perception of um, 10 and then okay uh, if you don't roll higher than a seventeen, Natel having keeping kind of tabs on you will sure. mm -hmm. notice it. Okay. Ooh. All right. All so right. you bump Ooh, into him. Uh, you 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 get a small coin purse, and inside is about fifteen copper. Um, sure. Okay. You definitely see uh, Toro doing a basic steal. Okay. Yeah. I I turned to Tira. I'm like. You probably didn't just see that, but he totally I did. stole I saw it. Guy. Okay, I, we need to... My <laughs> passive perception's a 15. Tonight. Yep, he did the, see it too. Yeah. We need to take care of this tonight. Yep. Yeah. This can't I continue. just saw it too. Like, just... <laughs> just because my passive's 13. Just... So I'm like, did you guys just... Like, did he just... Like, yeah, we'll, we'll not take care of it here. Maybe... One... When we're all alone. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I mean, because if he does that shoddy of a job, do you want me to, like, try to, like... Do you think this it? is the first time he's done it today? Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, I saw nothing, so I asked Button if he wants to go, like, find some more of that delicious, sticky, sweet stuff. Yeah, Button did see it, and uh, he's like, yeah, that's fine. Cool. <laughs> so unfortunately you can't find any more of that delicious sweet stuff in a jar because you found that jar in um Torg's uh, <laughs> traveling emporium and they yeah, didn't even they didn't even know what it was. <laughs> They're like, I don't know where yeah, sure, take it. I that. just I have this I have this craving for it. I don't know mm -hmm. how, what it is or what it tastes, you know, I just I, rem I know how good it is. It's so tasty <laughs> Oh gosh, it actually had crack in it. It's just like <laughs> <laughs> so good, I can't get enough. All right, oh, just ordinary water laced with a little bit of LSD. <laughs> Curiosity: <laughs> Would maple trees exist? This yeah, far of north? course, of course. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, yeah. Uh, this is definitely <laughs> okay. this is not this this is not standard sugar syrup kind of deal, though. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm. Okay. It's not hey, just the just... Aunt Jemima bottle that you found. That's not. <laughs> I cannot wait to find out what it is. Um, I'm sure I'll be horrified. Oh yeah, I'm sure it's terrible. Oh, God. Yeah. All um, right. All right. So I'm secretly glad that I've never tried this. So <laughs> I've put a fish in it. That's, that did happen. Yep. That's high yep, fantasy, ladies and gentlemen. So uh, <laughs> we're going to be ending tonight's session. Uh, with the characters heading to their room. So this is, uh, if you'd like, where you can... Um, I heard something about something with Toro. Is that something you're going to wait to do on the road? No, we're taking care of it now. Let's we're do not, it! Cause, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so uh, I don't want to, like, j you know, crowd him with a whole bunch of people. So I, I take... I pull Tara aside and I pull Ani aside, um, and I'm like, "We we need to go talk to him and figure this out." Also, please pair up for rooms, so I know who's with who. All right. I mean, I I I'll stay with Toro again. I got no okay. yeah, got no qualms. Okay. I'll stay with anybody. All right. I slept with hundreds of men. <laughs> So is Beltran. <laughs> that pirate ship was rocking. <laughs> Boy, howdy. Oh, 
oh, boy. Oh, yikes. <laughs> Something. I'm a little, that. I'm a little sad that. that was a thread that we didn't just go a little further down. But anyway, <laughs> uh, winding it back here. So I was eating all kinds of food. One day we'll be back in water deep and the yeah, ship we'll see what happens. So happy. It'll just be time. Just, We're just back right for the exactly a year later. <laughs> <laughs> it's like we never left. Uh, anyway, um, so yeah, uh, how, how are, how are you going to go about doing this? Okay. Um, <laughs> This is an intervention. Um, <laughs> we're just here to help you. Uh, but no. And I'll, um, I'll, we'll, we'll pull everyone into the room. Like, in a non-threatening manner. I'm just like, Toro, you know, we've noticed you've been a little off lately. We definitely saw you steal from that guy downstairs. And I'm sure it's not the first time you've done it today. And then uh, with boy avoiding you. And straight up growling at you. Did you handle the crystal last night? It's, it's Did you look at Toro, were you handling your crystal? <laughs> your button was in the room with you? Watch <laughs> what I was, I was here. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> okay. Um, Toro, what are you uh, getting up to? Uh... It, the, the crystal's been on my person since Anarissa gave it to me yesterday. Um, are you are you asking a thief if this is the first time he's stolen something? No, I'm not asking if you've stolen anything. I'm asking you if you maybe unwrapped the crystal and handled it or looked at it. I've been feeling fine. I, the crystal's been hidden the entire time. You didn't answer my question. I did. No, I asked you if you handled it or looked at it last night. Did you? Yes, I looked at it when Anarissa handed it to me, and then I put it away. Mm. And I, I just look at everyone else, and I'm just like... <laughs> Let me know if you want me to roll bluff checks, Chris! <laughs> uh, it so far hasn't reached that point. Okay. <laughs> yeah, um, I, I feel like no one's buying it. Like Natal's gonna believe yeah. this, or believe what she believes regardless. She, there's evidence. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh. So you would have no problem handling over the crystal to me, right? I don't think it would be safe to do so. Anarissa gave it to me because she cares about you and about Veltreya. Okay, yeah, then but... why don't you give it to Tira? I Tira's like, I don't want to touch this thing. Well, no. I think it's fine if it's wrapped. You just don't touch it and don't look at it. I'll take it. Oh, but that's, no, no, that's a good point, actually. I think, yes. But then why don't you give it to me then? We'll keep it under under wraps, literally. And yes, okay. I give you all my word. I don't look at this thing. I don't touch it. I, I don't understand what the problem is. Uh, Toro, the problem, imagine... the Toro, is the problem is there is something literally chiming inside your brain. That is a problem. I don't know what you're talking about. Listen, Frodo, hand over the ring. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not trying to rob you. <laughs> I'm trying to help I'm you. Trying to help you. <laughs> Frodo, we all know you're full of shit right now. Just, you know, maybe it's compelling you not to want to give, you know, to talk straight to us or to hand it over, but we would all appreciate if you gave it over to Tira. Um, you were the one who suggested taking turns initially just so that we could try to prevent this from from happening uh, and getting too embedded with it with any one of us. So what's going to happen here is Toro's going to make a wisdom saving throw. Not yet. Hold on. And then whatever you mm -hmm. roll, that will be the DC for Natel's um, inspired uh, uh, persuasion roll. Oh, shit. I think my persuasion's really low. You're the is one. It, wait, you, took, it you took the lead on this. It's inspired because everyone's talking. Is this okay. I have a plus six, six to persuasion. Can I give that to me? No. <laughs> oh, I have a plus nine. Sorry. Right. Um, Toro, let's well, roll that. Already... Okay, I'll, I'll guide myself. All right, Toro, roll the uh, okay. roll the DC, basically, is what you're doing. Okay. The DC Oof. is 19. Fuck. Roll with advantage, choose the higher, then roll a D4 and add it to it. And then we also have an inspiration. You do have two inspirations. You can use one of them. Oh no, you can't because you already rolled no, with advantage. You're already advantage. advantage. <gasps> oh. That's a nat twenty because I have a negative one. 
That is. Wow. <laughs> okay, so Toro, wow. as okay. as um, much as you don't want to give up your precious, uh, you realize that being cornered by your comrades and no way to escape, uh, mm-hmm. you decide giving it to Tira might be best. You can always steal it later. Yeah. Uh, you, you see him sort of hesitate, and then uh, uh, he's... Fine, fine. Uh, and he like reaches down into his boot and gives it to you. So it's all like wrapped up tight and everything. All right. I'm I sure like that. Is like, doesn't sweaty. that hurt to like walk on it in your boot? Like, I mean, no. I, I, there's pebbles, a pebbles he, he like hurt his, like hell, and he, you put a whole ass broke out of pockets there? everywhere. Yeah, and he, he takes yeah. off his boot and, and uses it as like a teaching moment. He's like, no, look, there's like a <laughs> tiny little pocket on the inside of the side of the boot. You didn't know this, but I don't have a right leg. This is just a problem. Yeah. <laughs> I, I feel like yet leg. again, Anaris is like just looking all extra storage. I, yeah, I was like, I feel like yet again, Anaris is looking dead at him and going. I'm kidding. <laughs> oh, <laughs> like, you know, like, so, um, she's done North this a couple times very, now where she's just like, the North is not a humorous place. <laughs> <laughs> we don't, uh, we don't grow you don't up say jokes. No. I could not tell. All right. So, <laughs> let me make sh- sure I understand. You'll, you'll get used to it after a while. Our current situation. I really hope not. The, the, I never know the current situation, but let's, let's pretend <laughs> that I think this is what's happening. You are gonna go out of the three options: going from Bryn Chander back to Termalane with the with the stone, going to Care Kurnig to meet up with Tavis, or heading south to find out what that dinging is. You're going with going to Care Kurnig. Is that the plan to meet Tavis, or did, did yes, I miss here? But we're yes? waiting. We're waiting until Copper is finished so that we can. Um, make sure that we have full information, and mm-hmm. then we'll come back meet with Copper. If you wait till go, Copper's go. finished, he's going to go on his own. Yeah. Yes, that's okay. fine. But the trip will probably take about the same amount of time well, it would take him to finish, or so maybe. Well. Uh, oh, we're we're no. going before he's done. Oh. Right. Basically, this is what I'm saying, guys. If you wait till he's done, he's going to be like, "All right, bye," and he's going to go uh, to Termalane while you go the opposite direction to Karakonik. Oh, okay. Well, then, okay. In that case, we might as well go to Kirkonik now yeah. and then we come back and meet him. Right. That way yeah. we can escort him Rather than him sitting to around in Bryn for two days. Yeah, so that's, that's the I'm plan. Saying. All right. Yeah. That works for mm-hmm. me. Okay. All right. So uh, in a, in a, he'll wait for you uh, for a couple of days, but once he's done and, and he knows you're coming with, he'll, he's going to go straight to Termalane and deal with his friend's passing. All right. And then also, uh, uh, Toro has given up the crystal to Tira, who now has it. Uh, and we'll see how that plays out next week. Hopefully a little piece of cloth will help prevent an evil artifact thing from doing something. We'll see. Uh, it's, you said it wasn't evil. That's true. You're right. You're right. It is not evil. It's not of this world and very powerful. It would be bad if evil got its hands on it. All right. So with that, everybody, we will see you next week. Thanks for watching, everybody. And remember, you can catch our, our past episodes on YouTube and podcast platforms. And uh, we'll be back uh, tomorrow and Friday for some more gaming action. We'll see y'all later. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.